Hello everyone, my name is Shambhavi. Hope you all are doing well. So today we are going to start a new topic and that is SQL for data science. It means the structured query language for data science, right? We'll be seeing out this topic in a very much detail. We'll be seeing about first of all that what's the history about SQL, then what's the use, how we just use that and what are the advantages, disadvantages. These are all of the things that will be covered in this particular video, right? So without wasting time, let's get started here. So let's start with the history about SQL. Let's let's learn a little bit that who developed uh, like SQL and in which year it was developed and all those things, right? So here goes the history about SQL. So in the 1970s, SQL was developed by Raymond F. A. Boyce and Donald D. Chamberlain. So these red colors, which are just marked out here, so these two are the persons which developed SQL in late 1970s. Okay, and it was developed actually at IBM and its previous name, actually some people call it right now as well, that it is the name is SQL actually. Many people just call it as SQL as well right now. Okay, um, fine. So it was designed for manipulating and retrie retrieving data stored in the original correlation database management system of the IBM. And that is the other thing. Just do not go into that definition for now because when we'll be seeing out that what actually this uh, means, that SQL means, then we'll be moving on towards the definition as well. Right, so this was the first commercial implementation of SQL was introduced in June 1979 by relational software for VAX computers, right? Now, whatever I've just written out here from this, there are two things which you can just uh, note down or just have a remember of that first of all, it was developed by these two persons at IBM and second that it was commercially implemented in June 1979. Right. So this was a little bit history about SQL. Now let's move towards the definition that what actually structured query language means. Right. So SQL, that is a structured query language. It is a programming language used for querying and managing data in relational databases. Right. Now, what do we have? Actually, the companies like the MNCs, like let's say take uh, the example from Amazon or Facebook, whatever you just take. So there are a lot of databases, right? We have a lot of data into that company. So uh, SQL is a type of uh, programming language. Okay, we cannot just say that it is any other language, the type of programming language only, which is actually used for uh, managing that data into the relational databases. This is what the use of SQL and this is the definition, right? SQL is the most widely implemented database language supported by the popular relational database systems like MySQL, SQL Server and Oracle. So these two examples which I have given you right here, that is MySQL, SQL Server and Oracle. So these are the three database systems, most used database systems in which SQL is widely implemented. Right, so hope you just got the idea that what you just meant from SQL. So like if anyone comes to you and asks out the definition for SQL, so you can just go ahead and tell that SQL is the most widely implemented database language supported by the popular relational database system. Okay. Great. After this, everything is okay. We just understand that what is SQL, that is structured query language, how like when it was developed and all those things. After this, the very important and the main thing that comes to understand is the application that if you are studying out a particular thing then what is the application why you are actually learning out that thing where you can just apply that out what are the fields where you can just pick it up right so let's let's learn that thing that basically what are the applications of sql so the very first application is data integration scripts so the main application of sql is to basically write out the data scripts okay write out the data scripts uh, which is basically written by the data administrators or the developers, right? The main application of the SQL is to write out the data scripts, which are written by the data administrators or the developers, right? So that is the very first one, which is data integration script. Second one is to retrieve out the information. As I uh, told you in the previous uh, topic as well, that basically whatever the like data we are having from that data, we just try out to retrieve out some information, retrieve out some important information. So that can be done mostly by putting out some functions, applying out, applying out some elements and all those things you need to do out for retrieving out some subsets from a particular information, right? So this is what is called as retrieve information. So let's read that out. So another popular application of this language is to retrieve the subsets of information within a database for analytics applications and transaction processing. So why we just retrieve out that data or just collect out the subset of the information? So as for the 
analytics application and transaction process now what is this analytics analytics is basically plotting out the uh, data into another forms and some gathering out some uh, information from that data and this is what actually comes in the analytics okay so the most commonly used sql elements are select insert update add delete create truncate and all those these are some of the most commonly used uh, elements in which we are uh, elements which we are actually having into the sql programming language Right. So, second one was about the retrieve, retrieve information. Now, third one is basically the other important applications of the SQL, so which is basically used for the modification of the database. Okay. We all know that what is a database? Database is a collection of a data. Right. So, in into the tabular form. So, uh, SQL is basically it is like it is purposely used for the modification of that database table which you are having. Okay, so in addition, the users can add a row, you can delete out a row, you can update a row, you can create a row, whatever you just wish out, you can just do all those things with the help of the SQL, that is a structured query language. Right, hope you just got the idea about some other important applications of the SQL as well. So these are the three important applications that I mentioned to you. First one was a data integration script. Second was to retrieve the information. And third was basically other important applications, right? Now, whenever we just talk about any of the language, either it is a programming language or any type of language, uh, we have uh, two things commonly in that. The first one is the advantages of that particular language and second one is the disadvantage. If anything is having advantage to it, it will surely have some disadvantages as well, right? So first of all, we're moving towards the advantages of SQL. That's what are the advantages that why we should use it. And then we'll be seeing about the disadvantages. Fine? Right here. So basically, let's start with the advantages. First of all, so my very first advantage says that large amount of data is retrieved quickly and efficiently. Okay. In the last topic, I just told you that there are many functions and many elements onto the SQL with which you can just perform out many operations, right? So with the help of the structured query language, what happens that let's say you are having a large amount of data, like let's say you are having a large amount of data. So with the help of the structured query language, you can just retrieve that uh, data, that large amount of data very quickly and even in a very efficient way, right? So this is the very first advantage. That's why people prefer to use SQL language, okay? Second, second is the operations like insertion, relation, manipulation of data is also done in almost no time. So uh, when, when we are just going to learn out the SQL language and that will be seeing out that as soon as I wrote out the command uh, that soon I just get out the answer whatever we are having onto that particular thing. So this is that let's say you just want to delete out put out any operation or do out any something like that. So in that you are having many functions which you can actually apply and it takes almost no time to give you the final output of that particular thing. Okay. Okay. Let, let's take a very quick example here. Let's say I'm having a uh, like a table, a data that is having 10 columns into it. Okay, now let's say I just want to uh, delete out the very first column. So I just wrote out the command for deleting out the very first column. And as soon as I hit enter, so my first row would be deleted. Uh, sorry, my first column would be deleted. And when I just try to print out my uh, new data, so in that case, I would only and only be getting that nine particular columns. Right, so this is basically it does not take too much of time in doing out these operations like insertion, deletion, and manipulation. Right. Okay. Now let's move towards the third uh, advantage. Now, uh, the very, very, very important thing is that that uh, for retrieving out the data. Okay. Uh, let's say many of you have heard about the web scraping. Web scraping is basically collecting out some data and using out that uh, data, and it is actually done with the help of the Python programming language. Right, so for that, you just need to write out a very large number of codes, let's say 20, 30, 40, what you, whatsoever data you just want to retrieve out. You just need to do the web scraping and write out a very long code. But let's see if you just want to get out any data. So in this SQL, that is a structured query language, you do not need to write the number of lines of code. Only two, three, basically, uh, some basic keywords will actually uh, get you, get try to you to uh, get out some a data from that whatever it is data want out from there okay so it's not the case that you, you are writing out 20 30 lines for getting out one one like some columns or some rows from a data it's not that case uh, in sql what happens that you're having some basic keyword that is select insert into update and etc basically we are having so that are actually used for 
data retrieval of the large number of lines of code. Okay, so this is the another advantage for using out the SQL. Number fourth, we are having that due to the documentation and long establishment of warriors, it provides a uniform platform worldwide to all its users. Yes, you can just get out the documentation, gets out everything onto the internet because this is a like very, uh, like very old language you can just say out. Okay, and the very fifth one is that easy to learn and understand answers to complex queries can be received in seconds. Fine. So this is a very uh, easy language to learn actually because here you do not need to write out a lot, lots and lots of code. Simply put out the function and you just get out the output. So this is why it is said that SQL is very easy and like easy to learn and understand. And basically whatever are your complex queries, whatever are the questions, your that answers of that particular questions, you will be just getting them in particular seconds because because it is having many elements and many functions onto it which which basically helps us to do the particular things right so these are the five advantages which i had listed about sql that what are the advantages of using the structured query language now let's move towards the disadvantages of the structured query language the very first one is that uh, sql has a difficult interface that makes few users uncomfortable while dealing with the database yes this is a very like you can say a little bit of drawback in the structured query language that the interface on which you write out the commands that's a little bit different from the other interfaces so you may face some un uncomfortable some unease some problem while dealing with the databases onto that particular platform okay this is a one disadvantage second is that some versions are costly and hence programmers cannot access it yes some versions are actually which are actually a little bit of costly so normal programmers we basically cannot access that out right and the third one is due to hidden business rules, complete control is not given to the database, fine. So basically, uh, onto the companies, we have, you have different rules, right? Onto that, you have the rules, you cannot share this data with this and that data. So basically, you cannot give out the complete control uh, to the database. So this is one of the either drawback for the structured query language, right? So these were the three drawbacks for, or you can say that disadvantages for the structured query language. Now. We had seen that what's the history and what's the SQL, what's the definition, what are the applications where you can apply, what is the advantage, what is the disadvantage. But why we should learn out this SQL? What's the use of learning this out? Is there any particular use or we are just learning it for, uh, uh, for adding one new knowledge to it? No, it's not the case. There is a role of SQL in data science. Let me, let me just brief that out that what's the use okay so here we are just going to discuss about the role of the sql in data science we'll be seeing that why and how sql is used using the data science why we just need to master out this particular programming language so basically uh, why does a data scientist needs sql what's the use of needing like what's the use of using that uh, sql of a data scientist so basically in order to handle the structured data that is stored in the relational basis so uh, this is the use of SQL in the data scientist that let's say you are a data scientist and why you will be using SQL so that you can handle out the structured data and store that into a particular relational base and after that you can just apply out some queries to these databases and this is why you should learn SQL for uh, for moving into the field of data science. Let me read out the sentence that a data scientist needs SQL in order to handle structured data. This structured data is stored in relational databases. Therefore, in order to query these databases, a data scientist must have a sound knowledge of SQL. So in order that basically you are able to use out these relational databases and all those things. So in order to use that out, you should have a good knowledge of SQL because whatever the data you are having, whatever the structured data you are having, that is always stored in a relational database. And that relational database can only be accessed with the help of the SQL, that is the structured query language right now basically um, most of you have heard about the tool a hardware of platform which is called as Hadoop right so basically Hadoop is at uh, these are the platforms which deal with very big data big data you had even heard about the big data as a buzzword nowadays right so Hadoop is one of the platform which deals with the big data so it provides an extension for querying out the SQL commands which basically with the help of the data you can just manipulate the data and perform some commands so for that particular thing this Hadoop is a platform which provide an extension for querying the SQL commands right this is the another thing 
uh, moving next basically in order to experiment with data through the uh, creation of test environment data scientists make use of sql as a standard tool okay uh, let's say you had made out some data okay let's say you just want to uh, experiment out with some data okay and you just had made out any test environment for the uh, you had just created out a test environment and you just want to experiment that with the data so this is the case that where data scientists make the use of the sql as their standard tool okay they just prefer out doing the things with the sql that is the structured query language fine after that basically in order to carry out data analysis with the data that is stored in relational databases like oracle microsoft sql mysql we need sql so data analysis i had already told you that what you meant by data analysis that is to analyze the data to store the data and to clean out the data to uh, perform some eda and just coming to some output this is what is called as data analytics right so in order to do out the data analytics with the data which you have stored in the relational databases so like oracle or microsoft in these type of databases you are having any data and you just want to work with that data you just want to perform some data analytics onto that data so these can be accessed only and only with the need or with the help of the sql that is the structured query language okay and the last one is that sql is also essential for carrying out data wrangling or preparation therefore when dealing with various big data tools you will make use of sql that already i have explained in the above points right so this is the way this is the need this is the role of sql actually in data science and this is why you should learn the data science because the learning of the uh, sorry learning of the sql is not too much hard it's, it's a super easy language that will be get to know in a little bit of time but uh, you should even have the knowledge of that if you are learning a particular uh, topic let's say you're learning sql so what's the use of that learning sql it's not the case that only learning and learning and learning where you'll be implementing out what are the use cases that all you should have the knowledge of and these are all the things which i have mentioned in this particular slide right now let's move toward the very last topic and here i'll be telling you a overview of all the concepts that we'll be covering from the next videos so we'll be covering about some sql commands these are of the five types that is ddl dml dcl dql and tcl okay and under these all the five we has uh, we are having some sub categories create drop alter truncate insert update delete grant revoke select commit roll back save when these are some of the commands which we are having in sql so we'll be dealing with all of these here after that we'll be dealing about the key elements of a database relational keys select queries joins data modeling fact and dimensional type tables and style schema snowflake schema and the ddl dml all of the these things which we'll be dealing up in the upcoming videos for the sql right so basically i hope that you had got a fair and a very clear overview regarding all the important information about the structured query language that what's the history when was it developed after that what's the definition after that what are the applications what are the advantages what are disadvantages why we basically use sql in the field of data science and what are the concepts that we are going to cover in the uh, for the videos so what did sql for data science now today basically we'll be learning about the different sql command types which we are having here right so sql the full form for this is basically the structured query language so all of these things we had already seen in the previous video even in a very detail that what were the applications what was the history for sql what is actually sql how we just use it what is the role advantages disadvantages all what these things which we have already discussed right now from today it's the turn for starting out the different sql command types okay today i'll be telling you first of all that how many command types do we actually have here and after that we'll be seeing them in a little detail that what are the functions what are the full form for all these commands and all those things right so let's get started so the, i would start with sql command type so basically we have in total five different sql command types the very first one is the ddl second we have here dql third we have dml dcl and then tcl yeah actually all of these seems like a little bit of like similar to each other right like ddl dql dml dcl and tcl it's a little bit are uh, difficult to remember that what function actually what does but when we just learn about the definition for all of these things then it's not that much difficult to learn that what are these command doing and what are the commands which come under this particular type right so let's let's take a quick summary that what we are going to discuss so ddl are the commands which come under ddl are create drop alter truncate comment and rename these are the six commands which come under the, under the ddl 
what about the dql so dql we are having select only one command we are having under under dql that is basically the select command after that we are having actually dml so in dml either we are having five commands which is insert update delete lock and merge dcl we are having grant and revoke and tcl we are having commit rollback save point and then we are having set transaction right so these are some commands some common commands which are into these different different types right now i would just not waste too much of time here let's quickly move on and jump on to the first command which is actually ddl let's see that what actually ddl means right so the full form for ddl is actually data definition language which is written here data definition language the full form for ddl never forget these things because these are the full forms only which will lead to you and let you know that okay what are these particular things used for okay so here we have data definition language now what is it actually used for so it is actually used to define out the database structure or the schema ddl is also used to specify additional properties of the data now wherever we just want to specify some additional properties to our data right so in that case we always use out this ddl ddl means data definition now data definition means defin defining the data means to specify and to add some particular properties onto the data right data definition is that particular thing so remember from here that ddl the full form is data definition language and what it does it is basically used to specify out some additional properties of the data right now in the previous chart we had seen about some uh, some commands which we were having in the ddl so these were the commands right create drop all the truncate comment and rename so from all of these commands we are having four commands which is which are actually mostly used out so the commands which are actually used out okay just one second right here just let me take out a color so that i could just let you know more completely so we have here create right so what is this create actually used for so this created actually used for creating out the object in data data frame database actually from its name only we will be able to understand create means to to create something right to make out something so in that case it is used to make out some objects in the database after that alter alter means to uh, like to change something something like that right so all or like basically alter alters the structure of a database Right, it basically structures alter the structure of a database which you are having. What about drop? Drop is also used for deleting out some objects from a database. That is also we can say from the name as well that it is used for deleting out some objects from a database. And after that, we are having here rename. So rename is basically used for renaming some object, renaming an object, right? So basically, here there are total these four commands: create, alter, drop, and rename. The in, rename that are basically used and most frequently used. Actually, what I could say, right? Uh, we are having two as well, two more, but we will not be discussing them right here. We will be discussing them within the particular whenever we just uh, figure out some questions for that. Okay, right here. So data definition language it is used to define the database structure or schema and detail also used to specify some additional properties of the data. Hope you just got this particular thing. Next we are having here as DQL. Okay, now DQL the full form for this DQL is basically data query language. See this Q is basically query. Hold on. Uh, listen to me very carefully wherever you find ddl dql and dml so the between the between characters which you are having d q and m these are only changing d and l actually remains the same d d is for data and l is for the language this q stands here for query fine okay now let's see that what it actually does so it is used for performing the queries on the data that is absolutely simple right so as it is a like full form for this is a, like data query language so it is basically used for performing out the queries on the data within the schema objects that is okay the purpose for the dql commands is to get some schema related relation based uh, on the query passed to it okay fine so basically they are, these are used for performing the queries on to the data this is a very main task which is actually performed by the dql statement dql means the data, data query language statements example i had already told you that was one only which was select here right and what was it used for it was used to retrieve the data from the database now let's say you want some uh, you want some particular rows from the data so you can just simply use out the select function and you can just put out your condition whatever you are having so it will display you that much number of rows or that much number of columns which you have listed out as a 
as a condition right so it is basically used to retrieve out the data from a database according to your condition which you are actually giving out right hope it has got the idea that what is this dql used for it is for used for performing the queries onto the data and the example for the dql is basically the select right here fine now let's move toward the third one that we are, we are having dml now dml is basically a data manipulation language m is basically for the manipulation right now what are these used for these are as as the manipulation words only suggest that manipulation means to manipulate something to manage something right so these are statements are actually used for managing out the data right these are statements are used for i would just write in managing data right now here comes a little bit uh, thing to understand that there are two types of uh, dms actually first one is a procedural and second one is a declarative now let's say that what are these procedural and declarative okay so procedural dms require a user to specify what data are needed and how to get those data okay procedure means that whenever you are just applying out this procedural dms in that case you need to specify out that okay uh what data are you are needed and how to get out those data right so i would just write a require a user to specify here we just need out a user to specify that what data are needed and how to get those data okay now what about the declarative ml dml these are as well called as non procedural dml so these require a user to specify what data are needed without specifying to get those data right now hold on listen to me very much carefully here procedural is basically require a user to specify what data are needed and how to get uh, like how to get those data right in declarative it is required the user to specify what data is needed that is okay but you do not need to specify that from where to get those data that from how that how to get those data this is not needed in the declarative dml in the procedural it is required that you need to specify a user need to specify what data are needed and how to get those data but in declarative it is not at all needed that it is basically not needed that what data uh, like uh, it is required that a user need to specify what data is needed but you do not need to specify that how to get those data now i hope you are just listening to me very much carefully so that you are actually able to listen out what i am just trying to tell you here from these definitions okay i am even highlighting the important part of this definition which is written out here fine so these are basically easier to learn and all those things are actually the thing which you can just read out on your own but yeah this was a very important thing which i have told you right now these are the commands which we have in the in the basically dml right first one is a select select insert update and then delete so yeah that again from the name only we can just see out that what are these commands used for so select is basically used for retrieving out the data from the database insert is for inserting data into a table update is basically existing data within a table it is basically used to update out a data which are, which is basically already into your table right and delete it is basically used to delete the records from a table space for the records or basically whatever you just want want it is basically used to delete out that particular thing from that table right so these are the four commands which come under the dml fine now let's move towards the dcl that what dcl is so here we go that dcl stands for data control language okay it is a syntax similar to the computer programming language used to control access to data stored in the database so basically data control language it is from the again from the name only we can say that what is it actually used for it is used to control access to the data which is stored in a database control means so here data control language is used to control the access to data stored in a database right conditions two are we are having grant and revoke so it grant basically allows a specified user to perform some specified task and revoke basically cancel the previously granted permission right so grant is used for uh, it basically allows a specified user to perform some specified task and revoke basically cancels the previously granted or the denied permissions right this is about the dcl and at last we are having here which is tcl 
TCL basically stands from the transaction control language. So basically here what are the commands used for? So the commands which are used here they are used to manage out the transactions in the database. Okay it is basically used to manage the changes which are made by the data manipulation statement. Data manipulation statements we had already seen which was select, insert, delete and update right. We had right now seen all of these three or oh, sorry all of these four. So whatever the changes you are you had made by the DML statements it is used to manage all those changes. Okay so I would just highlight this part as well manage the changes made by the DML statements. Fine and yeah that is okay and what about the commands which we are having commands we are having which are three let me just take out a different color here so yeah so the three commands are commit rollback and the save point so commit basically is used permanently to save any transaction into the database okay rollback this basically we store the database to the last committed state and save point save point command is basically used to temporarily save a transaction so that you can roll back to point whenever necessary Great. These are the three TCL commands which we are having here. Now, understand it in an, uh, one more way that commit is used to permanently save any transaction into a database, right? Rollback, this command, what does it actually do? It restores the database to last committed state. Whatever is the last committed state, it restores the database. Okay, this command rollback. And save point, temporarily save the transaction. Okay. Now let me just uh, let me just write out something here so that you are even able to classify all of these five in a very easier way. Um, fine. I would just take here D, D, L. So here the this D and this D. The first and the last character remain same for all the fours which we are having D, D, L, D, Q, L. We are having D, M, L, and then we are having D, C, L. All the four remains, uh, all the first and the last characters remain same for all these four. D is for the data and L is for the language. Now between the between uh, alphabets in all of the four which we are having, these actually change. So here this D, the between D which we are having that is used for the definition, right? So its full form is definition. The Q which we are having, this is actually the query, right? The M which we are having is basically the manipulation. So I would just write that manipulation here. And the C which we are having here. So the C is basically the control. So the C is basically the control. Now from the name only they are telling that what they actually do. Let me just tell you that thing as well here only. Fine. Definition means to define out the data. Right. So define out the data. This definition is actually used. Uh, so Data definition is data definition language is basically used to describe your data. What about the DQL? So that full form is data query language. So query means to query out the things to manipulate and to apply out the things onto with the help of the queries. Right. So query we are having only one function which was select. So select is one of the functions which is allowed to make the queries means allowed to give out the conditions. Right, DML was for the data manipulation language. Manipulation language means to manage something. Manage means that you can just update or do some changes into your data. Like to basically insert something, to delete something. All these things can be applied in the manipulation. And what about the DCL? DCL was for the control one. So here we were having that you can just uh, allow some uh, like allow some specified user to perform some specific task. That was from the grant. And basically revoke was to cancel the previously granted. And what about the DDL? So DDL was basically used for defining the database as I told you. So uh, basically here we were having create, alter, drop and rename. These four commands we were having in the DDL. In the DQL we were having the select. DML for select, insert, update and delete. DCL for grant and revoke and at last we were having TCL. So TCL was basically it is used to manage the transaction in the database and these are as well used to manage the changes made by the DML statements, right? What are the commands which we are having? Just commit, rollback, save point. These were the three commands, right? So hope you had got a very clear and a very fair idea that what are these commands, what are the definitions, how are these commands used, how we can use out this command and which command to use for doing what. Right, so all of these commands only, if you just remember out the full form for these commands, then they only let you know that what is it actually used for and where to use out these particular all the five of the commands. 
Right, hope it is good that what is a database will be understanding that what we actually meant from a database. After that, we'll be seeing about the RDBMS, right? That is a relational database management system. And then moving towards one process for the SQL, that what's the uh, like process for the SQL, right? These are three things that we'll be discussing in today's video. Fine, so let's get started without wasting out any of the time here. Let me just take out some colors so that we can put out some writings as well in the between us. Okay, fine. So the very first thing that I'm going to discuss is that what is actually a database, right? So let's discuss out. So database is a systematic collection of data. Fine, this is a very simple definition for a database that it is a systematic collection of data, right? Now, uh, what they actually support, they support the electronic storage and the manipulation of the data. Database makes data management easy. Now, what are the databases actually used for it? Uh, first of all, what is it? It is a systematic collection of the data that we had already understood out right here, right? They support out the electronic storage and the manipulation of the data. Now, why we just use out the databases? So databases actually make out the data management easy for us, right? So this is the only reason that why we actually prefer out using the databases. Let me just take out another color and highlight this particular thing because here it is the use that why we just use out, right? So databases make management easy. So this is the only reason that why we just choose out uh, dealing with the database. Right, hope it has got the idea. The very first thing that what is actually a database. Second, that um, what they, they, uh, they actually support. And third thing that what are they actually used for? Why we just use that in our programs, so in a use for the SQL, right? Fine, now we are having some example here. Let's see how this example for the database. Okay, let's say an online telephone directory uses a database to store data of people, phone numbers, and other contact details, right? Later, if I just talk about any online telephone directory, okay, what they do, they use a database. Now, for what they just use out the database, they use out the database to store the data of people, uh, to store out the phone numbers, to store out the other contact details. Let's say I just I just go and buy out some like some thing from some phone number or some I just, I just want to buy out a new sim, new sim right so in that case basically we are having many details which we just need to give out to that person who is selling us the same thing right so we just need to have out the phone number we need to give our other contact details as well right these are all the things which we need to give out so in which are they all storing out these things so these things are uh, actually stored in a database only and why we just use out this database because I've already given the answer for this particular question because they make the data management easy, right? Now, second thing, your electricity service provider. The provider who is uh, like who is providing you the electricity service, so that uses database to manage the billing, manage the client related issues, handle the fault data, etc. All are these things which are electricity service provider actually deals with it and where it is uh, where this electricity service provider saves, saves out all of these data so yeah that is actually saved, saved into database so your electricity service provider uses a database to manage billing client related issues handle for data etc whatever the things you are having out here um, these all are stored in the database right these two examples now let's consider also facebook we we all have or like, start, like heard about the Facebook and even many of you must be using or the Facebook as well. So basically it needs to store, manipulate and present it related to the members, their friends, member at activities, messages, advertisements, and a lot more. We can provide a countless number of examples for using databases. So what is this Facebook actually doing out? This is as well using out the database. Now what it is storing into that pieces? It is basically, it is used to, it's need to store the manipulate, present data related to the, uh, what it is doing, it is related uh, saving the like data related to the members, to their friends, member activities, messages, advertisements, many more things, all of these things, right? So hmm, this is what this Facebook is actually doing and storing. So where it is actually storing out? That is storing in a database only, right? Because that database provides us to make out the data management in a very easy way. That is the reason that they all use out the databases only to store out any of the data which you are having. Right, hope you just got the idea that what is a database, why we just use it, and what are some live examples for database, the companies or the places where the databases are used. So onto the online di telephone directory, onto the electricity service provider in Facebook, and at many, 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 many places wherever you just look out, 
here and you will be finding that where the data storage restoration uh, work is done actually in that case databases are actually used out fine now let's come to the rdbms let's see that what does what do we actually mean by rdbms that is the relational database management system let me take out a different color here so that we can highlight the particular things right so this is the full form for rdbms and rdbms and that is relational database management system okay now rdbms is the basis for sql and for all modern database systems such as ms sql servers ibm db2 oracle mysql and microsoft access right so rdbms is basically the basis for the sql okay and it is for all of the modern databases system uh, which which we which i have mentioned here which is mysql servers ibm db2 oracle mysql and microsoft access okay so data in the rdbms is stored in database objects called tables okay the, the data which we are which we actually store in the rdbms uh, sorry rdbms that is stored in a database object okay and that is actually called as a tables okay we just call that database name as a tables and what is table a table is a collection of related data entries and it consists of the columns and rows that we all know right that what is a table a table is a collection of uh, columns and rows right the data which is stored in the rdbms rdbms is stored in the database objects called as tables right this is the thing regarding the rdbms rdbms and let me just come down here once again fine i was just telling you about that uh, what is this actually the basis as well so right here so rdbms is the basis for sql and for all modern database system so what are the modern database system that i cover that is my sql server ibm db2 oracle mysql and microsoft access right these are the uh, some other bases for the sql uh which actually use out the rdbms rdbms right hope you just got this idea very carefully what i was just trying to tell you right here fine let me go above once again so let's revise how the database is systematic collection of data what they do support actually they support out the electronic storage and manipulation right and databases make data management easy we are seeing three examples online telephone directory electricity service provider and the facebook then we move towards the rdbms the rdbms are what is this rdbms so in that case we just find out find out that the full form for rdbms is relational database management system it is a basis for sql and for all the modern database systems such as ms sql server ibm db2 oracle mysql and the microsoft access and the data in the rdbb rdbms is stored in database objects called tables and what is table a table is a collection of related rows and columns this rows and columns okay right now let's see and move towards the process of sql as i was just trying to go ahead with the this particular thing right let me just take out some color once again so that we could just highlight out some important points onto the table fine so the process is first of all with the sql query which you are having you would just apply that particular query okay after that query goes on to the query language processor query language processor it goes out now into the query language processor there are two things first one is the parser and second one is basically the optimizer okay we have two things here parser and the optimizer so after that query language processor the sql query is goes on to onto the dbms engine uh, into the dbs dbms engine we are having here two things first one is the file manager and second one is the transaction manager and after at last it goes on to the physical database right this is the procedure for the sql as soon as you have wrote out the query so that query first of all goes on to the query language processor okay the query language processor actually consists of parser and the optimizer we'll be seeing out the definitions that what this parser and optimizer actually mean right here we'll be seeing out this hold on for a while okay and after that okay after the query language processor that particular query has been gone into dbms engine so onto the dbms engine you are having two things that is the file manager and the transaction manager and at last the sql query goes into the uh, physical database right now let's see about the parsing and the optimization okay so the parsing stage involves separating the pieces of a sql statement into a data structure than other routines can process that other routines can process right so parsing stage actually this is a stage where the sql statement which you have written out that has been separated into a, into different different pieces okay and that pieces are of a data structure 
that basically other routines can as well process right now the database parses a statement when instructed by the application which means that only the application and not the database itself can reduce the number of parses so database basically the database passes a statement when instructed by the application so whatever the like application is there so it basically passes out the database statement whenever it is instructed by the application which basically mean that only the application and not the database can reduce the number of parser just make sure here that remember out this line which means that only the application and not the database itself can reduce the number of parser so whenever it comes that what can reduce the number of parser so always the answer would be the application not the database okay so this was about the basically the parsing stage now let's see about the optimization because optimization was the second thing which we were having right basically during the optimization the oracle database must perform a hard pass at least one for every unique dml statement and performs optimization during this pass fine so in optimization basically the oracle database must be it it will surely perform a hard pass at least once in every unique dml statement dml statements are my data manipulation statements which we had already seen yesterday right and basically it performs the optimization during this pass let me show you about the dml statement once here so dml statements we were having select insert update and delete right these four we were having so as soon as the four statement is find out what it does it basically performs a hard pass for at least one time at that particular place but it just get to see out some dml statement the database did not does not optimize d d okay did not just have a look here that the ddl statements are already optimized not the ddl statements okay so the only exception is when the ddl includes a dml component such as subquery that requires up optimization so the, what is the exception so exception is when basically a ddl includes a dml con component such as a subquery that requires a optimization so this is the case where we just put out the optimization right so hope you just got the idea that when we just do out the optimization how we just do, uh, do that particular thing what we just meant by passing and all those things hope you are just very much clear and even we had seen about the rdbb rdbms and what is a database as well right Hope you just got all of these things in a very. In this particular video, we are going to learn about the different DML commands which we are actually having out here, right? So those DML commands we are just going to follow out in this particular video. So we are just going to see how the commands and now the syntaxes of those particular commands which we actually have out, right? So we'll be taking out a sample data and just we're working on going through that data for uh, basically for learning about all of these commands, right? Um, so I will just go on to this DML once and give you a quick revision that what we had already discussed about DML. So that was actually for the data manipulation language, right? And these were some commands which we were having in DML. Select, insert, update and delete. These were the four commands which we were having out here in this uh, DML. So we'll be going through all of these four in this particular video, right? So let me just go ahead once to that, uh, like where we're just writing out the things, right? So basically, I'll be just going uh, very first with the select statement. Um, here, yeah, this is the data which we are which we are actually on. This is some random data. It's not any any particular data because I just wanted to first of all work upon the data, a very small data from which you can just learn about the syntaxes of the SQL queries which are actually there. And after that, you if you are just going to get out a good hands on, so you just I had go ahead for the huge data and work on that particular thing. Right, so this is the one which will be working out. So the columns which you are having is name, class, math, science, English, computer on the total. So the, from the name as well, we can just understand that this is a data uh, for some students. So let's give it a name only as students. The data, the name for this particular table is student. Okay. And basically, we are having five rows, and these five rows are having all of the values into it. Right. Let's get started with the very first statement, and that statement is my um, select statement. Fine. So I would just put out a different color here so that I could just go on with the writing. Fine. Uh, so this basically this is one of the statements which is used to fetch out the data records from the database table and present in the form of a result. Okay, that's right. So it is basically used for fetching out the data from any of the tables. Now, what's the command? What's the syntax that we actually use? Out. So first of all, you just write out the select. That is their function, the statement which you are going through. Right, select. Now, after this is select a statement, what you go, you just put out the different column names. So I would just write here column 
underscore uh, name okay column name one then column name two whatever the different columns you just want to choose about you can just go about fit that particular thing and that totally depends on you that what are the total column number names which you just want to take so select column name right after that basically we use a we use from from and after from we just write out the table underscore name so this will basically help us to give out the table name right like right at this particular place we just need to give out the table name which we are actually having out okay and i will just put out another okay just let me write out here from table name i would write here where and where condition whatever the conditions you just want to put out you can just put out that in number of conditions so this is the way how we just use out this particular select statement for writing out the different sql commands so we write select column name one from table name where condition is this particular right so columns name and basically specify what are the column names you just want to fetch out the data for data for and from table name table name is basically your table name in which for like what are the columns you just want to fetch data for the data for that columns are actually put on so that is your table name right and condition if you just want to apply out some condition like that so you can supply out some condition as well okay right so this is the idea now basically let's give let's see an example here uh, that how we can just do out the particular things so i'll be just putting on an example let's go above and see how that Fine. So from this student's table, from this student's table, I'll be retrieving out the name, maths, and science. Okay. Let's say these are the three columns which will be retrieving out. So how we just do that? I would be just writing here select. What are the columns name that I just want to go ahead? Uh, what is that column name? So I'm having name, maths, and science right here. So select, and I would just put on here as uh, select name, separated by a comma. What was that next? Let's select next is class as well. Okay, name class, and let's say that is maths also. Okay, name class and maths. So these are the three columns which I just want to fetch out. Okay, these will be separated by different commas only. Okay, select is done. Now from in this from basically I could just put on the condition from, and what is my table name? There my table name is the students. So I would just put on that the students, and after that the semicolon. So this is basically how we just put out the select statement. This is how we just retrieve out the data. We using the select statement which we are having out here, right? So we just write out select. After that, we just write out the column names for which you want to fetch out the data. And after in the from, we just write out that table name from that table. You just want to fetch out the particular data, right? Hope you just got the idea. Now here one more thing comes that here you have just put on the condition that let's say name class maths you just want these three columns. Now there can be a one case as well that where you just want to fetch out all the columns which you are actually having here, right? This can also be a particular case. So uh, in that case, what you will do? You just write select name class maths and let's say you are having English, science, computer. All the columns will be writing out. No, this is not the correct way for doing out that particular thing. The case where you just want to uh, select and retrieve out all the columns from a particular table. So you, there you just write this, put out this asterisk sign. So select asterisk from, and what is my table? What is my table name? So that is students. Select asterisk from students. So this asterisk is only used in that particular case. In that case, where you just want to retrieve out all the data. Like all the columns uh, which you are having into that particular table name. So select asterisk from students. Right. Hope you are just pretty much clear with this particular select statement that I told you. So this is the particular syntax uh, which we actually use out. Right. Moving towards the second one. Now next we are having here the statement which is the insert statement. Right. Insert. I N S E R T. Fine. Now insert a statement. This is basically one of the SQL commands which is used to insert some data, uh, like which is used to insert some rows onto the database table. Okay, what the database table you are having? It is basically used for uh, inserting out some uh, rows onto that particular database table. Right. So this is the idea. So let's write out the syntax for this insert statement as well. So for that, first of all, we write here as insert. After that, we write insert. Uh, this is to insert into. Okay, insert into. After that, we just put out the table name, whatever table name you are having. Table under the score name. Okay. After that, into the bracket, you put out the columns, uh, like name of the columns for which you just want to put out the data. You just want to put out the extra rows onto that particular column. So that column name you just put out inside this bracket. 
okay and after that into the next line you just write out values and inside the values you write out that value which you want to put out into the particular columns which you have given out here fine as soon as you get out an example it will be much clear to you that what i'm just trying to speak from here right so let's quickly see our, see out an example from here so into that example i'll be just putting out some and uh, taking like okay uh, inserting out some rows right so let's see how it goes so right here okay so it's the use of my insert function i'll be writing insert uh here goes the t insert into what's my table name my table name is a students right that we had already taken so i would just write that students here let's go above and see um let's say i just want to add out an extra row into the name and i want to add on an extra row into the computer name and computer i want to add on right so i would just put out a bracket here and yes inside that i'll be writing out that column names in which i just want to put out so for me that is name put it a uh, comma and then even i am having here as computer name and then computer okay so in insert into two is students name comma computer and what about my values so here into the new line i'm writing values and into the bracket i'll be giving out the particular values needed so name would be in the characters so a b c d e after that we have f right i'll just put on that and let's in computer the marks which are stored are uh, let's say 42 right and put out the semicolon afterwards so this is basically how we just insert out some values into a particular column name according to your choice right so this is done so in, this is how the insert statement actually works fine now let's move towards the third statement that is the update so update uh, update like this um, okay just one second fine so update is basically the statement which is used to modify the value with like let's say you are having some existing values so it is basically used for modifying out that particular existing value What's the syntax that you use? So you just use I write here that update. What's the table name? You just want to put out the table. Update table underscore name. Like table name you just put out. After that you just use out the uh, set here. Set and after that you just want to put out the column. Okay. A column name in which you just want to make out the changes or to update out the changes is equal to and you just put out the value column value okay again you just put out the column and again value this procedure goes on till the particular time that this condition actually satisfied till that particular point where you just want to apply out some like uh, update out some values okay after that again a comma okay not comma there so here uh, now here as well comes out one where where just you can give out any of the condition according to your choice okay where condition and then semicolon this is how you just do out so let me just give you an example for that particular thing so i will just write out an example so i will just do the update uh, update table name is basically the students for us right update the students after that it goes about the set now let's say that where we just want to do it uh, okay so i just want to um, do it for the let's say maths okay in math i just want to do it for 90 fine so i would just write out so much 90 fine so uh, okay update the student set and here i would just write down first of all uh, that thing which i just want to replace out okay so i would just write on here my con uh, column name that is math is equal to and i would just write out the number that was okay which i want to update okay update the student set math is equal to um, instead of 90 what marks do I just want to put out let's say I just want to put out 100 here okay so update the students set match is equal to 100 and what's the condition where where match is equal to where match is equal to 90 so wherever you just find out the match, marks for the match as 90 so just replace that with the uh, marks that is 100 so when this program will be executed so instead here here 90 is present right so instead of that 100 would actually come because uh, into the match column only one value is 90 right so in that particular place this 90 would actually come out right this is how we just use to update out make sure that above you write the value which you want to uh, like updated value which you want to put out and the downside you just write out the exact value in place of which you want the update value right please do not make out the error using like do not confuse in the different syntaxes which are here fine and at last we are having that delete 
at last we are having the delete right so what is that delete used for just let me come down here fine so what is the delete so i just this is basically used for if you just want to delete out any statement so there you can just put out this particular one so the syntax for this particular is delete and here goes the from delete from and here is your table name that on which table you just want to delete out and you can just give it out a condition where this particular condition okay so let's see an example for this so i would just write here example and i would just use out again that is a uh, delete from our table name is students right delete from students where now i could give out my required condition let's go above and see out that condition so let's say i just want to delete out out for the from the students where my um okay let's say where the name is a okay yes where the name is a and um, yes where the name is a and the class is 9 okay where the name is a and the class is 9 there i just want to put out this particular delete statement so i would just write where uh, where name is equal to i would just write here a comma uh, okay where name is equal to a and okay and here goes the and and we were having class right and the class is equal to 9 so it will basically delete out this particular uh this particular row from your table whichever like condition you have given out here so right this is how you just use out the delete statement from the uh so delete in this, uh, like condition using the dml command and in the sql right so these are some commands and some, some used commands which we are actually having here hope you got out first of all the very uh, syntax that how we just put out the syntax for different different uh, these commands that is the select insert update and the delete right because this is the most important part in the sql that you just get out the syntax you just know how to put out the syntax otherwise uh, put, uh, like otherwise putting out the column name the table name these things are very super easy because that are absolutely same thing right hope you just got the idea regarding all of these dl commands which we have here right let's get started um okay let me just go on to that particular page where we had discussed about the same and let's see that what were the detailed commands that we had seen out right so that will create alter drop and rename these were the four which we had discussed out right so let's write out the same things and let's let's see that how it actually like what are the commands and how to use them out so here is the page okay on under this particular page i was writing out right here so i will just start writing out first of all the names of the commands that we are going to discuss today in this particular video so let me just start with that particular thing first one is the create one okay first i'm just going to take out this create command um uh, okay after that i'm just going to discuss about the command which is alter fine and the next i'm just going to discuss about the command which is drop okay so here we have create alter and drop these are the three commands that i'm just going to discuss in this particular video okay so just let me quickly take out a color here and let's start writing out the things so uh when we just talk about the create command okay i would okay this one another thing that i'll be taking out the same student data set which we had taken yesterday right the same one which we'll be taking right here okay today as well i'm just putting all of the uh, like commands and the things onto this particular one only right so let's see for the create one first of all that first what is it that used for so it is basically used to create out the objects in the database right so i will just write that thing as well used to um used to create objects in the in the data base okay this is how actually it works so you should create out the objects into the database now let's see on that what's the particular syntax that actually we have here for the create one so let's go on with the syntax so for create one so first of all we'll be writing out that same command c r e a t a that create one that we actually have out here fine after that you will be putting out the table name okay create table okay first of all we'll be putting out that table right this right create table fine and after that you'll be putting out that table name on to which you just want to create out something so i would just write create table name right okay after that bracket start and into the next one you'll be writing out the column name okay the column name which you want to put out and what is the data type for that particular column okay after the column name you we'll write out the data type for that particular one that it is the integer or basically it is float or it is character what is it actually 
afraid after putting out that you will be uh, like for the next thing you like next and next what are the columns your number of columns you just want to put out you'll be putting out all of those here right here okay so here goes the column number in underscore and here goes the name and then as well goes the data type for that particular one right and putting out a comma and at last closing out this bracket here and putting the uh, semicolon no, that is semicomma right okay so this is how you just use out this create one this is how you just use out this particular uh, command that is create for creating out some object onto a particular database right let me just give you an example here um okay so let me just now come at this particular place and okay let's see this is the table which we had taken out right so in this i was having name class math science english computer and total let's say i just want to create out one new uh one new or like column here and let's say that is um okay let's say that is basically um, max okay let us actually let's say um uh, max range so let me just go on to this particular place and let me move above a little bit right here so let's start out let's start out writing so i would just write out here the create fun create uh, like command first of all okay after that put i would write out the table here so here goes the um table and after that i'll be putting out the name for that particular table so for us the name for that table is students right i'll just put on that particular thing putting on the bracket now let's say i just wanted out a column that is id okay i just put on that column name and here goes out the integer fine now here i'm just creating out a new table onto my own actually okay i'm just creating out a new table onto my own so this is basically how we just create out a new table onto our own so create table and then let's say my new okay just give me one second let me erase out this previous name here and give it out a new name so let's say that is a uh, student is done let's say that is teacher okay let's say this is my name for this so i just want to first of all put out the ids and that would be in the integer format after that let's say i'll be putting out the let's say name and that would be type of car okay so i would just write that var car and into the bracket i'll be putting out the um, size so that let's start as 15 okay again putting out a comma um let's say i'll be writing out here as um, okay id is done name is done let's say we just put out a phone number okay that will again be the integer only fine and i will just close out the bracket on to the next line and put out the semicolon here fine this is how we just create out out the table in the like using out this ddl command that is the create command this is how we just create out a, a table uh, into this particular database right hope you hope you just got the idea regarding creation of the one next basically moving towards the second one and that is basically the alter function Right, in the this alter pers uh, alter one, first of all, I'll be uh, using out the function which is add. Okay, so basically, uh, that is basically used for adding out some column name and a data type, like data type for particular column name into the table. Fine. So, um, the syntax syntax is basically, uh, you're writing the alter function here. Sorry, alter command which we have alter. After that, we'll be writing out here as table. and then here goes out the table underscore name right this is how it will first for put an out after that i'll be using out the add function so i just wrote out that add and after that i'll be putting out the column name and then goes the data type and here goes the data type right this is how um you just write out this uh, alter one function alter function and uh, alter command and add as a function which actually comes out here right Uh, let's take out an example for here. So the one which I had made out above, into that only I'll be just trying to add out a new one more command here. Okay, this is what I'll be just using out, uh, like making out here. So for that I could just write here alter. After that comes out the table, and what is my table name that I would be using here? So my table name which I'd be putting out here is teacher. Right, the same table name which I had put on. So teacher, that is done. Okay. After that, come to the new line. I'll be using out here add function which we have here. And what is my column? So first of all, I'll be writing here as a uh, uh, column, add column. And the example, uh, sorry, the name for that column is let's say, um, let's say subject. Okay. This is the subject. And you'll be putting out here var 
cat and just let me come down first of all and basically we're putting out the silage that size is 50 fine so this is how you just use out this um alter add function okay alter add function so to make out this particular uh, adding out some things into this fine the second uh okay just one second let me take out the cursor fine the first one was add which we actually have out here let me just give it as a only fine coming to the next line we'll be writing out here as b so let me just one second let me come down right here and second one second function which we have under this particular command only that is modify that this modify basically is used for making out some changes into the existing one which is actually already existing we can just give it a, a modification okay mm, okay this is a, okay it is basically used let's say i just use out the integer okay let's say i just use out the var car and given out a particular range now i just want to change that to any other data type so in that case we just use out this particular modify function so i would just write here alter after that comes the table and again here goes the table name table underscore name in the next line here comes about the modify function so here there's the modify and modify what's the field name so i would just write here inside that field name and after that goes out the data type okay data okay just one second so here goes the data type and then the bracket like this right and it goes up to the till the point whichever you just want to put out and after that semicolon so this is basically the syntax which we just put out for using out the modify one now if i just took out an example for this particular thing so how i can just use i can just use that alter command which we actually have i could just write out here this table and inside that i could put on the table name so that table name is actually uh, we have teacher right so i just put on that after that i could just use out this modify function which we actually are having here after that inside uh, okay now here i could just write out the name of the like uh, that particular data type which i just want so okay just let me okay let's say we take phone number okay let's say I, I would just take that uh, what was the above one which we had made out what was the name mm, so yeah that was phone number so okay just one second let me come down right here so phone and here goes out the number so phone number i would just take that and i just want to convert that into a, another data type that is big int fine this is how you just alter out the uh, alter out the table with the help of the modify function right hope you just got that particular thing now the third and the last command is basically the describe so describe c r i b e right to so describe uh, describe so now this is basically used to de describe our table name the syntax for write this is super easy i would just write that syntax here and let me just come down first of all so to get out some space for writing out fine so basically you just use out the describe command which we actually have here describe and after that you just put out the table name whatever you are having and that's it so this describe is basically used to give you some information regarding your table actually which you had made out this is basically for to view out the table okay when you just want to see out the table so i would just write that this command so that basically do not forget that afterwards so this command is used to it is basically is used to view the table it is used to view the table right this is why because like this is how the this particular command is used out this command is used to view the table so whenever you whenever the case whenever you just want to see out the table in that case you can just use out the describe one so i would just write here uh describe and after that i could just put down here the table name which i have so let's say that is teacher and after that put out the semicolon semicolon right so this is what the use of describe function is right here so hope you are now just got out the three one which is create order and drop now it's very important you to remember out the syntax the syntax for all of these things because writing out the queries is not a tough task but remembering that where to put the commas, where to put the brackets, what to add, and what, what function to use, which command to use for that function, it's a difficult task, right? So just remember out all of these things. The first one was the create. Then we had seen alter. In the alter, we had seen sub functions, two functions that were add and the modify. And at last, then we had seen out the describe command that is basically used to view out the whole table. 
Right, so hope you just got out these things very much carefully that how we just use out this command and what's the syntax and what's the example for this particular command. Commands for this particular DDL one and that word just let me show you. We had seen about the create, alter and the drop. These were the three which we had seen out right now. In this particular video, we are going to see rest of the three commands which we have in the DDL that is basically drop, comment and rename. Right, so let me just come down here and let's start uh, using out the commands. So number four. Okay, but before that, just let me give you an idea that what was the table name that we had made, what were the columns in that particular table that we had made out. So, with the help of the create function, we had used, uh, we had just made out the objects into a database. So, name for that particular uh, database, we, uh, like for that particular column which we had, so table which we had given out, that was um, teacher, right? And the columns which we had given were for ID, name, and the phone number. After that, uh, doing the alter, so after uh, doing the some alter into that, we had added one more column that was subject. And we had modified out the uh, name of the PC. We had, okay, just one second, let me take out the cursor into the hand. And, and with the help of modify, we had just modified one of the uh, like columns, which was phone number. So into that, we had firstly taken out the integer data, but after we just converted that to big int. And then we had used a describe function that was used to view out the table, whatever we had just made out, right? So this was all which we had done in the previous video. So in this particular, I'd be, I'd be first of all, okay, let me just first of all list out all of the three ones which we are going to discuss out right in this particular video. So number four, we are just going to discuss about the function which is drop. Function is called as command as well, right? Um, number five, we will, have, we will be discussing about the comment, right? And in number six, we will be discussing about the rename, right? So these are the commands that we'll be discussing out right here. So let me take out the color and here let's start. So let's discuss about first of all the drop function, which we actually are having right here, right? So what I would just do, I would just first of all write out the syntax for that. So drop function, why is, is it used for? So it is used for dropping out a table. Let's say you have made out a table and you just want to drop out that particular table. Let's say above I had made that particular table which was uh, named as the teacher. Right now, uh, I just want to drop out means delete out and remove out that particular table. So how to just do that? So for doing out that particular thing, we have the syntax that is drop. And after that, we have table underscore name. This is how we actually do out the same thing. Right. Mm, syntax and then the drop table underscore name right now uh, let me just first of all let you know that what is it used for as i mentioned that used to drop a table so this one is basically used for dropping out a table right so what i would just do i would just use out that uh, command here which is drop and after that i could just put out the um, table and after that i'll be putting out my table name which i'm having which is teacher so drop table and here we go with the name that is teacher fine right so this was the function which was actually done here after that i'd be what i'm doing is here that i'm just going moving towards the fifth one so that is the command which we have and that is comment actually okay now what is that comment used for um so let's say you just want to add out the comments to a data dictionary okay this is basically used for adding out the comments to the data dictionary so this is basically the command and uh, you, you basically we do not have any particular syntax for this particular command okay but what is it used for so uh, it is basically used for add comments add comments to the data add comments to the data and dictionary data dictionary so here goes the data addition, right? So this is basically for what the com comment, uh, sorry, comment function is actually used out. And then we have basically the last function and that function is actually what? That function is actually the uh, rename function, right? So I would just put that particular here. So right here. So using out this now, what is this, this rename function actually used out for? So, okay. So rename function is basically used for renaming out some table and giving it a new table name. So let's say you are having something, some name uh, of your table and you just want to give out a new name to the, your particular table which you are having out. So this rename is the one which will actually help you do. So let me just remove this out and write in a clear hand handwriting. So here goes the um, rename, right? It is basically used to, um, like it is used to rename out a table. I would just write here 
the use for this that is rename a table right this is the use of this particular one so what is the syntax that we are actually having so the syntax that we are actually having is um, i would just write that particular thing rename and i would just write a rename table let me just come down first of all just one second rename table and here goes the table and is going what a table name you are having two and here would come your new table name which you just want to give out new uh, just one second new so new and table underscore name table underscore name right so this is how you just do let me give you an example for the same thing i would just use here let's say rename okay let's say the table which i'm having which is a name as teacher i just want to rename it uh, rename it with some other name okay so rename and after that my table i would just write that table itself here and what is the table name that i'm having so table name my real table name is teacher so first of all you'll be writing out your real name table name which you're having now after that i'll be using out this two and now here i'll be using out the command which is new and after that i'll be giving out my new table name which i just want to put out i just want to put out let's say info underscore teacher this this like the teacher uh, table which i was having i just want to convert that uh, teacher into info underscore teacher right so this is basically how i, I could just rename out this particular table table that is teacher and give it a new name that is info underscore teacher so let me now just go above and show you that what are the commands that we have discussed right here so commands which we have discussed are drop comment and rename so drop one is basically used for dropping out a particular table name right so if you just want to uh, drop out a particular table name so in that case is drop is a function uh, which is actually used out after that we had discussed about the comment so comment is basically the one which is used to add to comments or data distribute and after that we had discussed about the rename so in the case let's say just for you are just having out a table name and just want to rename that table name with any other name so in that case this rename is used now let's a quick example for all of the functions which we have discussed out so let me just take out a new color from here um okay so let's say i just want to create out a table and the name for that table is um let's say employee okay so i would just write here a uh, create and here goes the table and my table name is let's say employee so i would just write that employee put out the bracket put out the columns that i want to give i just want to give out the id and that would be into the integer format after that i just want to uh, give the emp underscore name so that would be in my character format and size would be 50 right let's say after that i just want to give out the salary so salary would be into the float format so i would just write that float and this is all these are the all ones which i just want to give out so this is how i could just create out a table according to my choice whatever i just want to make out right after that let's say i would just want to use out my alter function so what is that alter function useful so that is made for making making out some changes right that is basically used to add out any column name or to basically basically modify any particular column name that is used for th this particular thing right so i would just use that particular so i would just use out my alter alter table and my table name which i had made out is employee right so i would just write that particular table name here that is employee and after that basically what i would just do after that i'd be just using out here uh, okay into the down one i'd first of all use out the add and i would just add one column to that particular one right so add and after that basically i just, i would just put out a column name let's say my column okay first of all i just write here as column and the name which i want to add out is let's say employee salary is done and um, okay after that i could just add on um, okay but just one second let me see what are the things which we are having just one second um okay id is done employee name is done salary is done i go i could just add here the transportation transportation let's say transportation from which that particular employee comes bike or car scooter whatever that, like that person is preferring out right so that would be in the character only so car let's say i put out 50 right that is absolutely done here that is completed right i just ordered out a column name now let's say i just want to modify a data type into the existing one okay i just want to give a modification um onto the uh, data type so i would just use here again alto table what is my table name that we are having so the for me that is actually the employee right 
After that, I'll be just using here. Okay, not the alter. After that, I'll be using out here modify. So let me write that modify. And basically, what's the what's the like one which I just want to modify? So let's say that is same only. Okay, I would just want to modify. Let's say id. Okay, and I just want to convert that to big b i big int right so i just write that particular thing and put out the semicolon at the last right so uh, okay just one more thing everywhere the semicolon is put at the last right make sure to put out that particular do not forget to do that right so i have modified out my table now let's say i just want to print out my whole table i just want to see how my table is actually looking so in that case we just use out to describe and after that i'll be putting out my table name which i want to view okay so i will just write this uh, describe and here goes the employee employee is my uh, like that table name which i want to see out right so i just put on this describe table right now let's say i just want to drop out my table which i had made out right the table which i had made right here i just want to drop that out so i would just write here drop and what is my table name which i want to put out so okay just one second i would just write in the starting i would just write a drop table and my table name which is employee so this will basically help me to drop out my table which i had already made comment you already know that's not the anything and let's rename our name rename our table so here i could just use here rename uh, what is my table um, okay first of all i'll be putting out the table what is my table name which i want to rename that is employee and what's the new name which i want to give out so rename table employee to and uh, data let's say data data i just want to give out the new table name to and after two i'll be just using out here as new and then here comes the new name of my table which is data i just want to put out right so here all of the commands i have discussed once again after taking out an example so now hope you are very much clear regarding all of these commands which i have told you for the ddl now today we are going to discuss regarding out the dml commands remember that we had already discussed about the dml commands in the previous video right we had discussed that what's the full form for uh, sorry we are just going to discuss about the dcl commands so we had already discussed regarding the uh, like the full form for the dcl that is data control language right we had already seen that thing after that a data control language is syntax similar to a computer programming language which is used to control access to data is stored in a database right what about the grant and the revoke so grant basically allow the specified user to perform a specific task and what about the revoke so it cancels out the previously granted or the denied permissions right um this was about the dcl which we had already discussed in the previous video right now in this today's video we are going to discuss regarding the syntax of this particular thing and we'll be seeing that what are the syntaxes for putting out the things and what are the commands that we just use out here which right, so let's get started okay so uh, first of all we'll be moving with the okay here are several uh, different commands which i'll be introducing you to okay so first of all i'll be writing out the heading for that and then we'll be writing out the command so the first command that we are going to see out is allow a user allow a user to create allow a user to create session okay this is what we are going to discuss today allow a user to create out the session fine so i would just click on this draw and here i would be just taking out a new color so that we could just write out here the required things whichever we are right here so what's the command for this particular okay when we just use out this thing so whenever we just use to create out uh, like create out a user in sql okay basically uh, in that case we just like we just uh, like for granting out the permission for granting out the session uh, we just do out this particular thing right so in that case the command that follows out is grant create grant create session grant create session two and after that comes your the user name whichever you just want to put out so i would just be putting that thing down in a new line so here is that user name fine to grant create session to user name right i just told you in the dcl when it showed you this particular i just told you that there are two particular functions which are used right first one is the grant and second one is basically the revoke right so in the same only we are just doing out this particular thing so grant create session to username right this is the idea regarding this particular first command which we actually have out here okay now 
what about the next command so next command basically which will be writing out here is that let me now just again take out the color which we had taken for the heading and yes here goes my second one that second one is basically for a allow a user allow a user to create table okay now allowing that out a user to create out a table this is the second command which we are gonna see right here so basically into this particular command what happens that we need to okay what uh, first of all it does so it actually allows a user to create out the tables into a database okay whenever you just want to create out the tables into a database um this is the particular um like uh, you can see this is a particular command which is actually followed and used out okay so right here i'll be just writing out that it is basically the second one is grant create grant create table to and here goes out the username so grant create table to username let me just come above right now just have a look between the differences both of these the first one was basically allow a user to create out the session so in that here we had written out the session right when we were just writing out a command to allow a user to create out a table so in that here i just wrote the table other than that both of the commands are actually and absolutely same to each other right fine so these are the two ones which we had followed out after that let's move to the third one and yes here the third one goes out so for the third one what we are going to discuss here so third one basically is provide provide user with provide user with a space on on uh, provide user with a space on table is space table is space to store to store table now this is another thing which comes under this um, grant and the revoke function so that it provides like for okay the command for providing the user with space on table is space to store table now what is that actually you know, like used for and what is the use of this so basically what it does it allows a user to create out the table okay that is not enough to basically storing that data into that particular table okay basically uh, it's not even enough that we had only stored the data into the table other than that we also must provide the user with the privileges so that it is basically available in the table space for the table and the data to be used out right only making out the table is not the uh, case which should be followed out right we should provide it with some of the privileges so that it is it, basically we are able to use that it is basically available on the table space for using out the table and the data right so this particular command does out the same thing which i mentioned that it basically uh, allows us to use out this particular table space which actually has the table and data stored into it right so here okay so here i'm writing out the uh, command for doing out this particular thing first of all let me take out the eraser erase this out and come back to the color right here so this this particular one is alter alter user alter user user alter user username and here goes the quota q u q u o t okay quota unlimited unlimited on on system on system okay so whatever the username you had given above right in the in the above uh, one we had already seen that hey, you need to give out some username this is basically the username which you need to give out so whatever this particular username you had given out you would just write it alter user and into that this particular between place username would come and here goes the quota unlimited on system okay that is system like this okay right here so this is basically what is done when we need to provide the user with the space on the table space to store the table and what is the use that i have already mentioned that what's the use for doing out this particular thing right now after this basically we have the another command that is let's come down and let's see that what are the other ones which we are having let me take out the color so yes okay and let me come down now what we are having we are having number 4 and that is grant all privilege to a user so i would just write that a uh, grant all privilege 
privilege to a user okay granting all the privilege to our user now in this case basically what we do so in this case basically we have spis dba okay spis dba we have it here what is that that is actually a set of privileges which has all the permissions stored into it so when if we just want to provide out all the privileges to any user we can simply grant them the spis dba permission to them so the command is as well the same only let me just put on the color here so that we can proceed on with the writing so my command comes here and here first of all comes out the grant function so grant after that we have sys dba the same one which i mentioned to capital to and here comes the username which you had already put on right so grant sys dba to username fine this is the idea regarding this particular thing after that what do we have next so next basically we have the another command which is command number 5 let me just come down to this place so that is basically grant permission to create any table okay that is grant grant uh, permission grant permission to to create any table it is basically the granting permission to create out any of the tables okay so into that case basically basically it can be a case that sometimes user is basically restricted from creating uh, some tables with some names and that are reserved for the system table these are all the things which actually comes in between right so this is what the command which i'm just going to write it will basically help you to grant out the permission for everything okay so here comes the grant and here goes the grant create any here comes the any then we have table two and after that we will be putting out the respective username whichever we are having right so this basically command is used for uh, like, like writing out the a uh, grant create any table to the username it is basically used for granting out the permission to create any table so whenever we have just created out a table after this we have one permission to drop out that table as well right so if we have a case in that in which we can make out a table so there should be a case in which we can drop out right so now next we are just going to discuss about grant permission grant permission to drop grant permission to drop any uh, okay that is table and it is not grant it is grant actually okay just make sure to write that thing correctly fine so grant permission to drop any particular table so as we had made out that we had used the create so instead of simply instead of the create we'll be using out the drop other than that everything would absolutely remain same so that is grant drop any any table to and here we have user name okay and the last command which we actually have out here is regarding that revoke function which we have so what does that revoke do does it basically helps us to get out the permissions right number 7 is basically for revoke so that is uh, the command is basically for to take back the permissions to take back the permissions right so whenever we just wanted to take back out the permissions so in that case what we use in that case we simply use out the revoke function this we had already seen previously right so i would just write the command for that so the command for that is revoke create revoke create table so here comes the table from from and here at last comes out the username so here basically the revoke create table from the username so when i just go on to the dcl so here we had seen about the this one second uh this is dcl right so in dcl we had already seen regarding revoke function that it is used to cancel out the previously granted or the denied permissions so in the same way to take back the permission the, the word is absolutely same so in that case i could just use out this particular command which is revoke create table from username Right, so hope you just got the idea regarding all of this command, DCL commands which we have discussed. Right, in the previous video we had discussed regarding the DCL. Right, we had seen that what are the DCL commands and basically how to deal out with that DCL command. Right, and even we had seen how the syntaxes, the commands, the functions. These were the things which we have discussed um, into the previous video. Right, so now today in this particular video.
we are going to take out this TCL command. That's basically the transaction control language, right? So, um, in this, basically, there are total three uh, topics which come. The first one is commit, rollback, rollback and the save point. Right? So these are the three basic functions uh, which just come out uh, under that TCL command, right? So, we'll be seeing all the three right here in today's video. Okay, so we'll be seeing um, that what are they used for, how to use out the syntax for these particular three of the commands, right? But just one thing, let me move the side and yeah. Okay, so today's topic of discussion is TCL commands, right? So TCL commands, fine. So we are seeing that there were total three TCL commands, the commit, the rollback and the save point, right? So first of all, we'll be dealing out with them. A commit one so let me just put on the heading for the first one and the first one is actually commit right so we'll be seeing that first of all what's the use of this commit function how well like why is it used and after that we'll be proceeding with the other things in this particular um, topic right so I would just take out a color let's say it is this one right here okay so the main use of the uh, first of all, the main use of the commit command is basically it is, makes, it is used to make out the transaction permanent. So I will just write that. Uh, make, make the, make the transaction, make the transaction permanent, right? This is the uh, use of the commit function whenever we just use out the commit function. So this is the main use that, um, if you are preferring to use out the commit function, so we basically use it for making out the transactions as permanent, right? So, uh, basically, if there is any need for the transaction to be done into the databases, then that transaction uh, can be like that permanent transaction can be done through the commit command. Okay. Okay. Fine. So. Okay, why I just wrote permission that is permanent. Just let me correct out the thing that is um, just one second. Let me take out the same that is permanent. Right, so as I mentioned, that it is used to make out a transaction is permanent. So, whenever it is a case uh, that they basically you just want to make out any of the transaction to be done in the database, and that transaction permanent can be like made out with the help of the commit command. Right. Now let's check out that what's the syntax for this commit function. So the syntax comes here as you need to write out that update. Um, okay, that is uh, like this update. Okay, you feed the okay just one second. Um, right here. Fine. Let me just calm down first of all. Okay. So here's the update the student. Uh, update student set student um, student uh, underscore name uh, is equal to let's say some name is there let's say that is a applying out that where condition where is student underscore name is equal to let's say something b so in that case do out here the commit this is the basically how we use out this tcl command it's not that case that this commit uh, command is used so you'll be using this commit command into the that statement only where we just need to put out no it's not that case so you just wrote out your statement whichever you just want to make out permanent let's say here i just took an example this is a quick example okay which i just took it off for a statement so let's say i just wanted to make out this statement as permanent right this this transaction as permanent the whatever the transaction i have done out here i just wanted to make out this as permanent so in that case i could just first of all update out like write out whatever the transaction i just want to make that i have written in these above two lines and at last you could just simply write here commit okay this commit function will actually help you to make this thing as permanent as we had seen that it is used for making out a transaction as permanent right so it will be missing making this above transaction which is written as permanent right so hope you just got the idea regarding this permanent thing and basically what you can just do here is that uh, if you just want to make out any of the particular transaction as permanent so the best way for making that out is using the commit function right 
okay that is done now i would just move on to the second topic for today and that is basically my rule back so second goes and here comes the roll back command okay let me just come down uh, for the roll back command and let me just take out the color again as well which we had taken previously so that i could proceed with the right fine first of all uh, what's the use of this roll back command which is actually here what's the use why we just use this out so uh, basically this command is used whenever the database can be restored to the last committed state let's say you just want to restore the database according to the last committed state right so in that case this rollback is a command that we actually use out okay one more use is there that it is actually also used with the save point command for jumping to a save point in a transaction okay that is the secondary thing that we'll be discussing uh, with the save point topic but the main uh, work uh, for the rollback command is actually it helps the database to be restored in the last committed state okay and when we just, just combine with the save point so basically it is as well used with the save point command uh, for jumping to a save point in a base in a transaction okay so hope you just got the idea regarding this uh, rollback as well that what is this used for right fine now let's see out the example for this rollback so what i would just do here is that i would be putting out the different things um right here so what's the syntax so syntax is uh, basically example you would just write out the set of statement which you just write want to write out above and after that simply you would write the rollback okay let's say i'll be taking that same uh, one same statement which i have taken above that is update update student set student underscore name let's say these are some columns which i'm having onto this data which is student okay update a student set um okay just one second let me take out the eraser from here because it's like not properly like we are not able to properly read this out whatever i've written right so update a student set and here goes the student student underscore name underscore name which is equal to let's say a is the name right uh, where where is student underscore name where is student underscore name and that name is actually b right put out the semicolon and at last you would be writing out here as rollback this is basically how you just use out the rollback so whatever the tcl commands we are having in that we what we like all okay just one more thing that whatever the commands which we have dealt till now in all of those commands uh we had used out that particular command name in the starting and after that basically we had done out the further things whatever we just wanted to do out right but in the tcl commands it's not the case first of all you would be writing that particular command you would be writing that particular function which you want to perform out after performing of that function you would be using out your tcl uh, like required tcl command right so basically uh, so this rollback command is actually used out whenever the user realizes that he or she has updated the wrong information after the student names and uh, you, and you just want to undo the uh, update right undo the like uh, update whatever you have right written out so in that case user can uh, use out the rollback command and then basically undo the uh, undo the uh, update right so this is the idea regarding this particular thing let's say you were just writing out an information and you just thought out that okay i just wrote this information wrong now i just want to uh, uh, like print out the previous information which was present you just, you just do not want to print out the new information right in that case simply you could just use out that uh, rollback command which we have out here right so hope you just got to know regarding that what is the first of all use of this um, rollback right and after that basically we have the third one that is uh, uh, that is the save point so i would just write that save save point command okay and i would just come down and take out a color from here now into the save point now what it is the use for so the main use for save point command is basically to save a transaction temporarily okay 
it is basically used for saving out a transaction temporarily okay now let's say uh, in this way the user can roll back to the point whenever it is needed right now uh, uh, let's say you just put out anything you just stored out anything so that thing is stored or saved uh, that transaction is actually saved temporarily, not permanently. So whenever you just want, you just uh, can go back to the previous data, whatever you have entered. That is basically that rollback actually, right? So this is the idea regarding our the uh, save point. Um, for example, basically there is no such like uh, thing into this. You could just simply write out your required statement and after that simply just write out the uh, save uh, point and like this okay that save point is actually in a small it's not in capital make sure to remember out that thing okay so, so that is la, like save point after that you could just write the save point and run that particular thing so as i mentioned that the main use of the save point command is basically to save out a transaction temporarily in this way the users can actually roll back to the point wherever it is are needed to that right okay so hope it has got out the particular thing regarding the save point, right? Now, we had seen three functions. We had seen the commit, we had seen the rollback and we have seen out the save point. Now basically what's the difference between all of these three functions which we had seen out, right? Uh, what's the difference between them? So oh, when we just talk about the differences between the three, so let's take rollback, commit and then the save point, okay? So let me just come down here and even let me take out some color for writing mm -hmm. and okay so the first one is basically the roll back fine second one is my commit and uh, third one is basically my save point these three are the ones which we are like gonna see are the difference for so in rollback basically what is the case in rollback the databases can be restored to the last commit state right we, we had seen this thing in a way detail right here uh, that whenever we just deal out with the rollback or commands in that case databases can be restored to the last committed state right what about the commit function so it saves out the modifications which are made by the dml commands and it permanently saves the transaction okay so commit function is actually used in the case when when like let's say with the help of some dml command we had made out some modification okay so th that it, it saves out that modification and it permanently saves out that particular transaction right this is the use of the commit function what about the save point so save point it basically saves out the transaction temporarily right so rollback basically it can be it, it is basically used uh, data case, databases can be restored in the last committed state. Commit function uh, command basically used to save the uh, save out the modif modification made uh, made by the DML commands. And save point is basically it saves the transactions temporarily, right? What about the syntax for these three? So the syntax for rollback was rollback to save point underscore name, right? What about the commit? Commit was commit only and save point was as well save point save point underscore name. Okay, let me write out those things because it's the important and that I haven't mentioned above. So let me just write out write out that thing here actually. Roll, roll back into the bracket, uh, roll back to, here comes the save point underscore name. Okay, roll back to the save point underscore name. For the commit, it is actually same that is uh, commit, everything would be in capitals. And for the save point, we are having here, I'll be writing a uh, save point would be capital. I'm sorry, above I mentioned that it would be small, but no, it would be in capital only. Okay, make sure to put out that particular thing. So here goes the save point, and into the bracket, you have the save point, uh, you have the save point underscore name, like this. Okay. So this is basically for the save point and at last you are left out with one more thing. So yeah, example, you can actually do it on your own. So there's no such thing that you cannot put out the examples. But yeah, these were the syntaxes, the proper and the correct syntaxes, which I have told you and which were not mentioned above uh, which from me into the uh, like above descriptions, which I told you. So I just summarized out the things right here so that it is um, easier for you to understand out the things and go ahead with those particular things. Right, so now I hope that you are very much clear with that TCL commands as well.
Regarding the DQL commands, that is the data query language commands, right? So this is one of the topics which we have already discussed previously. But yeah, we had only discussed regarding um, that what is DQL commands, what is it used for, and what are the sub commands which come under this, right? We haven't seen now the syntaxes, we haven't seen now the examples, and all those things we haven't done that thing till now, right? So today we are going to see regarding all of the commands which we have in the DQL commands, right? Um, so basically, if you remember when we had studied about the DQL commands, in that case, we just studied that DQL command only consists of one single uh, command, one single function into that, uh, and that is actually the select command, right? S E L E C T. Select command is one of the only commands which comes <laughs> under the DQL commands. But what's the more thing here? The more uh, next thing that comes here is that. Uh, the select command, which is actually in the DQL commands, it has many sub queries into it. Sub queries, or you can just call it clauses actually. Okay. It has many uh, sub clauses into it uh, with the help of which the select commands are actually used. So we'll be seeing out the select command as well as the, all the clauses for the select command, which we actually have out, right? Let me just go on to the uh, DQL file. Right here it was. Uh, let, let's give a quick revision regarding the data query language. So its statements are used for performing the queries onto the data within the objects. So the purpose of the DQL command is to um, get some schema relation based on the query passed to it, right? And this was basically the query which was select one. And it is absolutely used for retrieving out some data from the database. That is absolutely the truth, right? Okay. Let's get started with the select command. So I would just write that particular command here itself, select, okay? Fine, that is absolutely done here. Now, what do we have? Uh, first of all, I'll be writing out the syntax for the select command that we actually have, okay? So the syntax for my select command is, um, I would just write here, first of all, select, and here comes the column, Okay, just one second. That is uh, column list. Okay, uh, here comes the from. And after that, uh, like after the from, I'm just writing out and down there because there is no space above. So here comes the table name. So the first arrow column in which I just put on these arrow inside that I just wrote out the column list right so this column list is basically the whatever the columns you just want to uh, select from a particular table that column names you need to enter here into the first one okay and from table name table name is basically the name of your table which you are actually having right so i would be just writing both of these things here as well so that you would just get out the proper thing regarding this um so let's say here i have that um, table name um, table name is the table name is the name of the of the table. Let me come down. Table name is the name of the table from which um, yes from which the information is retrieved. Okay, In, from which the information is retrieved. R e t r i e v e d. Right, so table name is the name of the table um, from which the information is retrieved. Right, this is the thing. That is absolutely okay, actually. After this, we were having the column list that as well I mentioned. So column list. And what is this column list? So it includes, column list includes, uh, it includes one or more, one or more columns, one or more uh, columns, one or more columns from which data is retrieved. From which, from which data is retrieved. So retrieved like this. Okay. So this is the column list. I just told you regarding both of the things. That was for uh, what is the table name? After that, what is the column list? Which, which these two parameters we were actually having onto our uh, like select a statement which we had written out right now uh, okay just let me come down here and quickly just let me get, define out some columns and a quick database here so here we go with this particular thing and after this i could just make several lines inside this um let's say we have one column 
um, okay let's say we have one column after that um, so here comes our second column after that again now here comes my third and the fourth column like this right this is absolutely okay we had just made out some of the columns which we wanted in our database and yes okay now i would be just writing out the names for these columns which we had made out that what are the names that are actually here so writing out that let's say first one is the admission number admission number okay second one is basically let's say name third one uh, let's say i have here as gender fourth is let's say i have age okay so let's say these are the four okay let that be age and let's make out one more column as well here like this and that would actually belong to the place right so here comes the age and this is the place Fine, let's say these are the five columns which I have onto my uh, data, which I had right, data base, which I have taken out. So let's say admission number is 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, uh, 106, and here it was a 107. Let's say these are the number of rows which I am having onto my data. So let's say some names are the uh, for them the gender is there for them the age for them the place i'm just not gonna fill out the whole data here like i just gave you an idea for that particular thing right so that this table name the table name which i'll be giving right here to this table is um, i'll be writing the name and that is actually the student table student table fine this is the name that i wanted to give out to this particular table fine now uh, let's say i just want to select out some particular columns from this data which i am having fine i'm having the columns uh, which are admission number name gender age and place let's say i just want to select admission number and name so for that how i will i how basically will i be writing out my pre stay select a statement so select write out the column list whichever you just want to do so for me it is admission number comma and we have name as well right and here comes the from and after from i'll be writing out that particular um table name in which these two column belong so that table name for here for me i'm having as a student and putting out the semicolon at the last this is basically the statement that we will be going through whenever we just want to select out any particular columns from our data set that you are absolutely clear with because this is one of the things which we had already discussed in some of the previous videos because this is one of the commands that are just similar but here we are just going to discuss out some different keywords and the clauses for the select statement okay right and if you just want to view out the whole data whole database so in that case we just simply write select asterisk from student so select let me write that as well it will not take more than one minute so select put out that asterisk sign which is the multiplication sign actually select asterisk here comes from and after from you'll be writing your um, table name so that is the student for me and putting up the semicolon right this is how we just do out the things fine the select the statement is absolutely okay that is absolutely clear we had done out the things regarding this now the very first topic which comes here the very first keyword which we will be discussing here under this um, select the statement that is distinct that is distinct keyword okay that is distinct keyword now the very first question arises that why is this distinct keyword used like what's the use of this particular thing still we are having many commands onto the sql so why we should use out this keyword with the select command right so uh, it is as i mentioned that it is used along with the select command now what is it used for it is absolutely used for uh, eliminating out the duplicate rows into the table okay so let's say you are having one row and that that similar row is present three to four times onto your table so what is that that is actually the redundant data that you are having right so this is the use of the distinct keyword only that it is it basically helps you to eliminate and remove out the duplicate tables duplicate rows whichever you are having into your table right so in in the one on the sense we can just say that this helps to eliminate out the redundant data 
okay so hope you just got that idea now how we just use this with the help of the select statement so absolutely the command is simple so i would just write here select and here comes the distinct keyword which we are having select distinct let's say what uh, let's say i'll be using this according to the place okay let's say i just want to remove all of those rows which have similar places okay let's say this is my case so in that case let me come down select distinct i would be writing place okay select distinct place here comes the from that what is the table name from which we need to do out right to so select distinct place from and after that we have the table name which is actually student so i just put on that particular place here select distinct place from student right this is the idea regarding this particular distinct statement so what it will do whatever that uh, whatever the places you are having out here so in that place it will search out the distinct rows and it will so like show you all of those rows here as an output from you for you okay so hope you just got the idea regarding first of all that how we just use out this distinct keyword first of all you'll be using out the distinct keyword and after that you can just write out select as to from student so that will basically give the whole data regarding the students of the different places and all those things it will just give you as an output to you right hope you are very much okay with that after the distinct keyword we have the second which is all keyword so second topic comes here that is all and here goes the all keyword like this right now what it is actually used out so uh, it is the all keyword actually retains out the duplicate rows it means that it will display every row of the table without considering the duplicate entries okay it basically retains all the duplicate rows it means that it will display every row of the table without considering the duplicate entries okay in that case if you are uh, like uh, let's say if your particular any of the column is having uh, some duplicate some distinct some duplicate key uh, places as so let's say i just took out this uh, column which is place okay and your data is having some duplicate places as well so it will display all of the uh, rows whichever you are having onto your data okay it will not eliminate any one it will uh, as you are giving the like as the things are mentioned onto your data it will similarly copy all those things and mention to you as an output fine so let me just show you that how we just write out so here comes the select as these are all the uh, keywords which come under the select command only so it's compulsory to always first of all use out the select command then choose your keyword accordingly right select all let's say place is the column which i want to go ahead from and after that we have the student select all place from student and here goes the same column right so what what this particular command will do this particular command will actually give you all the uh, all the data which you have onto this particular column which is place either it is duplicate or it is distinct it would give you each and everything let's say chennai is present three times onto your data so it will display that particular place that is chennai three times onto your as i as a output for you so it will not eliminate anything as you have used out the all keyword right so hope you just got the idea regarding this all keyword and regarding this distinct keyword other than that you have got the idea regarding the select command other than these two keywords we have many more keywords and many more clauses on to the select command that we'll be discussing in the further we're discussing about the different dql commands right we were we had seen about the dql command that was a select one and under that select uh, we were having different keywords and different clauses which we were actually going to right so we had discussed two of them um first one was the distinct and second one was the all so distinct was actually used for removing out the duplicate ones from your data set and from a database and give you the same and all keyword was one of the keywords which will display out all of the entries which you have onto your particular column these were the two which we had already seen right now let's get further to all to this particular thing so into the all keyword only we had some more things here one thing comes that is the where clause w h e r e where clause let me just put on a different color and proceed on with the writing of the thing so here comes um this where clause actually i am talking about 
what is this actually used for what what's the use of this particular thing so it is used for giving out some certain conditions let's say you have a condition that you want to uh, choose a place which is let's say pune okay you want to just choose out a particular place which is let's say pune so in that case you will be using out this where clause for giving out your respective condition whatever you are having right let me just go above to the columns which we had made out fine let's say you want to give out a condition that the you want all the data of the all the other persons all the names all the students whose gender is let's say female so in that particular case you will be using out the where clause so this where is one of the clauses which helps you to put on certain conditions according to your requirement whichever you just want from this particular data whatever the data you just wanted want out from this uh, from this um, data set whichever you are having so this where clause actually helps you to give out some certain conditions right so let me just write out some examples here also first of all let me put you like like tell out the syntax so uh, first of all select a statement will be used because this is the sub part of the select a statement so that command i had put on into the bracket i'll be putting on my required column name whichever i am having right here okay whatever the column names you just have you could put all of them right here okay uh, the n number of columns are actually out, allowed after that we have the from so into the from i would be writing here as table name that whatever the table name from whatever the table name these columns actually belong to write out that particular table name right here and after that we'll be putting out the where clause where and here comes out your respective condition which you wanted to give out respective condition right so this is the whole syntax which we follow for uh, like for using out the where clause with the help of the select statement right so okay just one second right here so hope you just got this idea first of all after this now let let's quickly get get out an example for this thing then we'll be moving forward with the other things so the example is i could just write out here first of all my select a statement select command which we have after that comes my column name so column names i'd be taking let's say that is okay first three okay so okay let's say admission number name and let's take let's take age here so select admission number then we have name then we have age as well now let me just come down at this particular place select admission number name age um then we have you from okay from here comes the one that is a student that is my table name what's my condition which i want to put out so using here my uh, clause where clause so used that particular where clause here after that let's say my condition is that it should be greater than or equal to let's say 18 okay this is my condition which i want to put out that the age should be greater than or equal to 18 so that respective and that particular condition actually i had put on here so what what i will be getting as an output i'll be getting all uh, like uh, all the rows in which the age uh, age of the students is greater than or equal to 18 right i'll be getting the data for all of those um, rows right so those rows will con contain actually the admission number the name and the age only these three things with that data would be consisting out so select after that comes out my columns which i want to give out so admission number name and age then use the from uh, that is basically used for putting out the table name from table name the table name is student uh, where age is greater than or equal to 18 right all of these things actually i have mentioned out now uh, yeah that is absolutely okay we just put on all of these things right uh, moving towards the third one now we have the clause which is between and not between fine between and not between now these are some other two keywords which we have what are they used for so the between keyword actually defines out the range of the values that the record must fall into make out the condition true okay so um i understand it in a way that it is a type of keyword which define out a particular range of values okay and
and the record the like defines the range of values the record must fall into to make out the condition as true fine so the may, the range may include the upper value and a lower value between which the criteria must fall into okay let's say i would just go for the age column only let's say i just enter out the uh, range that i want all the or the details of those uh, persons let us just want the admission number i want the name and i want the place of all those persons which lie in a range that is between 18 till 20 right so that can that in this particular condition this particular case which i have mentioned between is the keyword which we will be using to do out this particular thing right now just let me come down at this particular place and write out a statement for this so here comes the select after that i have admission number select admission number um then we have here the name after that let's say i just want the age as well uh, okay here's the age and let's say i know this one let's say i just want that let's say gender as well okay these are the four columns data which i want after that i would be i'll be writing out this from from will basically give my condition sorry sorry my table name so that is a student for me that comes here where now this between is not used to separately it is always used with the where clause okay where uh, let's say i want to go with the age parameter where age here comes the between where age between 18 and 20 let's say this is the idea so select admission number like give give get me the data for the admission number for the name and for the age and the gender from the student table where the age which we uh, where the age column is between 18 and 20 right so it will give me all of the data uh, of the for like for the name admission number age and gender which is between 18 and 20 fine this is regarding the between statement what about the not between so not between is totally the reverse of between so it will let's say whatever the things you have mentioned here let's say you wrote 18 and 20 so it will uh, not give you the data between data for the ages which is between 18 and 20 and rest above like uh, before 18 and after 20 it will give you all the rows as a data for you let's say you want that 18 and 19 these are the two ages that should not that you will be not getting as an output let's say you want that you do not want the data for the 18 and the for the age of the students which is 18 and 19 other than that you want the data for all of the rest all of the rest ages so in that case you could simply apply the condition not between 18 and 19 so it will not give you the data for the 18 and 19 it will simply give you the data which would be uh, before a uh, like uh, less than 18 or greater than 19 18 and 19 would be removed from that particular data whichever you wanted out right so this is the idea for the not between let me write out the statement here so here comes the select uh, select we have admission number select admission number uh, let's say we have name let's say after that we have age okay let's these are the three things so i will be just writing here select admission number name age from a student from a student comes the where clause which we have from a student where age not between instead of between we would simply write here where age not where age not between 18 and 18 and 19 just one second let me just check out one thing above um, okay, one thing to mention in the between one, let me just use out the eraser here. This and would be in capital, okay? Or if you're just making it small, it will kind of show you some type of errors or something like that. So make sure to put out this uh, operator that is and in the uh, like in the capitals. So this not between will actually restrict out the data, will not give you the data for the ages which is 18 and 19, and leaving out this 18 and 19 ages, it will give you rest of all the ages data whichever you are wanting you wanted out the admission number you wanted in the name and you wanted the age so uh, admission number name and age will be 
given for all of those students which are not having their age between 18 and 19 except the ages 18 and 19 all the data would be provided to you which will be consisting out the admission number name and the age right so hope you are very much clear that how we just use out this um, one second let me take out the cursor here yeah hope you are very much clear that first of all how we just use out this where clause after that what's the use of between and the not between still there are some more keywords and clauses to discuss so that we'll be seeing in the further video is regarding the uh, like between and the not between keywords right we had seen that what are these keywords and actually what are these keywords used for right we had even seen out some conditions which we just put out with the help of this between and the not between keywords so in this today's video we are going to discuss regarding some other keywords as well which we have uh, in into this particular select a state so let's get started i will just take out a color here let's say that is the green and um, what was the last number which we had put on that was three yeah. fine let me just come down so one second right here and here comes the fourth one and the fourth one we are having as in keyboard so now this in is one of the keywords another keywords actually which we actually we have out here what's the use of this in keyboard so let's say uh, okay so first let me tell you the use and i would let you give the example so in is one of the keyword which used to specify a list of values which may, which must be matched with the record values okay whatever the record values you are having it would be matching with that record values okay after this in other words basically we could just say that it is used to compare a column with more than one value okay it is similar to an or condition so this keyword this in keyword is actually used for comparing out a column with more than one value so whenever you just want to compare out more than one value so in that particular case we just use out this in keyword hope you are very much clear first of all with this particular thing which is the in keyword fine so uh, let's jump to the example then it will be more uh, much clearer that what is it actually used for and how we just use this thing here fine so here goes the example for us so let's say i would be using out my select statement because yeah as i mentioned in the previous topics as well right now i'm again mentioning that these are the commands these are the keywords these are the clauses which come under the select command so first of all it's it's the like way for representative for using out the select after that you'll be putting out the other things as well okay select what are the columns which you are having so we are having admission number name gender age and place okay one second let me now once again come down so uh, let me just go above right here so select after that i'll be writing admission number so here goes the admission number then we have the name we have the place okay admission number name place from a student is basically my table name that we actually put out that is the okay uh, where comes my where here comes my where clause where place let's say i'll be using it for the uh, place column so place in where the place in and into the bracket let's say my place which i want to give here is let's say chennai comma and let's say second one is delhi okay so as soon as you are going to run this basically execute this out what it will be giving you as an output will be giving you all of those um, rows which will be consisting of the admission number the name and the place and the condition for the place is that it would be chennai or delhi whatever you are just uh, like willing to do out uh, like you just you can give out any n number of places condition that let's say you only want it for the chennai and delhi so i just put on that particular things inside these brackets let's say you want it for chennai delhi and pune so you can just put on pune as well here so that totally depends on you that what you want to give what you want, do not want to give what conditions you want to apply out okay as i mentioned into the definition for this in keyword that it is basically uh, used to compare out a column with more than one value so here i have used more than one value to compare out my column right 
so you could just get out the answer here like this as well now as people are having between at the and the non bit not between in the same way we are having the in and not in fine so what is this not in keyword it will basically display only that records that do not match match out the list let's say you mentioned here um select admission number name place from a student where place not in chennai and delhi so it will not give you that particular rows which will consist of chennai and delhi except chennai and delhi you will be getting that rows which consist of all of the other places but the condition would be one single only that would chennai and delhi would be restricted and removed out from the particular list of the rows which will be giving out so let me just write out that particular thing here as well so here comes out my select command so select here goes the let's say admission number we have name and here comes out my place okay select admission number name place comes out my from condition from here goes my student from student and from a student here comes my where condition where this is place where place not in where place not in and into the bracket comes about my places which i do not want to put first one is the chennai and second one is basically my delhi right so both all i have just put on here so what i would be getting out from here i'd be getting all the rows which do not consist of chennai and delhi as a place for them the reason for this particular thing is that i have used the not in keyword here in this case if i had used out in keyword so that in has given me only the rows which consist of chennai and delhi but my case is that i have used here the not in keyword so using out this not in keyword i would be getting all the rows which consist except the chennai and the delhi fine hope you are very much clear with this particular thing fine after this basically now um okay even we have one more value which is null field so what is this null value so in null value we are having so null value um it can be searched from a table that uh, basically if the table is null or not okay using the help of with the help of the where clause okay so uh, let's see let's see that we want uh, let's say we just take an example that we we want list of all the students whose age contains no value so basically let's say in that case that particular uh, value for that age must be missing like nothing is entered into that so in that case we just use out this null value let me tell you the syntax also because it's like it's very easy i could just let you know right here so the select is select sorry select asterisk select asterisk from here comes the student select asterisk from student where where age where age is null okay so it will basically let me know all of those particular columns which are having age as empty for them so let me use out this eraser and let me make out the asterisk sign in a way that it is clearly visible and see right here fine so this null is actually uh, completed right here as well after this we have another clause which is the order by clause now what is this order by clause used for okay let me come down um right in the space right here so next we are having number 5 that is order by clause okay order by clause what's the use of this next clause which we are actually having right here what's the use of this thing so it is a clause in sql which is basically used to sort out the data either in ascending or in the descending order based on the uh, columns right based on your requirement it basically sorts out and even based on the columns it just sorts out your data into the ascending or into the descending order right by default the order by clause sorts out the data in the ascending order let me write out this thing it's a because important thing so um, by default 
by default the the order by by default the order by clause sorts the data in the sorts the data in the ascending ascending <coughs> excuse me in the ascending order right so by default the order by clause sorts out the data which you are having into the ascending order right this is the idea regarding this um, order by clause now basically we can just whenever you just want to uh, like uh, sort out your data into the descending order okay because by default it sorts in the ascending it is one of the case that when you want it to sort on the descending so we will basically simply use out the desc keyword desc um, okay keyword would be written afterward so keyword okay this desc is a keyword which actually uses out for sorting out the data into the ascending order and even if you just want to use out for the uh, like descend for the ascending so ASC keyword can be used but there is no such use because it by default sort or the order in the ascending only so there is no such use for the ascending only the use for the descending comes so the keyword is desc right now i'll be seeing at the syntax and the examples for this and the rest of the clauses in the next are uh, going to proceed further with that order by uh, keyword which we were dealing with just one second yeah so we'll be dealing out with that order by keyword uh, more over right here. Okay, so we had discussed regarding that what are the by default order by clause. So we were having the by default order by clause as ASC. That is basically my ascending order. And whenever you just want to convert that, um, uh, like sort out your data into the descending order. So we need to use out separately. That is DESC keyword. Right here, that are the things we had had discussed. Let's see how the syntax and all the things for this particular thing. So let me just take out a new color from here so that we can proceed on with the writing. And okay, let's take out this one right here. So I'd be first of all using out my select statement, which we have here. Select. Okay. After that, we have um, column name. Select column name. Okay, fine. What are the columns name I am having? I'll be putting all of them here. After that comes my from condition. That from would actually cons constitute that. What are the table name that we are having from table name, right? Here comes the order by clause. Order by clause. Okay, order by. And after that, again, it would be coming out my, let's this is my column one. Um, let, after that, let's say I am having some column two. What are the columns like column names you would be having? I just put n number of things here, right? So column one, column two. And let's sort it in the ascending or descending. Let's say I, I would just write here DESC. So uh, what it would do, it will sort out these columns for me into that descending order. Right, this is the idea that it will actually do out. Fine. Now, um, this is this is the these are the whole things which we have out here. Now, what I would just do? Let's quickly take out an example here. Let's say I would just write out here as select. Okay, select. After that, we'll be putting out this asterisk sign here. What is this asterisk? It means that select all of the columns which we are having in our data set. Which asterisk is basically used for that particular thing. So here in this particular example, I am not taking any particular column name. I am taking the data for all of the column names, whichever we are having, right? So select asterisk and here goes the select asterisk from a student. A student is basically my column name, sorry, my table name, which we are having. Select asterisk from a student. After this comes out my order by function. So order by and I just want to order that according to the name and I do not want to give you our descending. So by default, it will arrange and sort that into the ascending order. What this statement will do? It will, uh, it will take out my name column. Okay, it will sort out all of the columns according to the name into the ascending order. 
fine so this is the idea that whatever the names would be from a that would come at the first then would be b then would be c d and that will be followed up till z so this all would be uh, what are all the columns you are having that all columns will be sorted according to the name column fine hope you just got out this idea that how we just use out this particular let's quickly take an example for the descending as well so i would just write here select let me again use the out asterisk sign select asterisk here comes the from mm, select asterisk from our this particular name is a student where select asterisk from a student where um, age is let's say age will be putting out the equal equal to 18 okay age equal equal to 18 um, okay not equal equal let's say how could we put equal equal we would be putting some under let's say greater than equal to 18 here comes the order order by and at last comes the name uh, order by um, here goes the name and in which format we just want to do out we want to do out it into the descending order so d e s c and the colon what it will do uh, it will get out first of all me all of the rows which uh, which like uh, all the rows in which the age is greater than or equal to 18 after that the rows which are a in which the age is greater than or equal to 18 it will sort all of those rows according to the name but that would be in the descending order the sending order means that first of all now whatever the names we are having with the z alphabet that will appear after that goes the y after that uh, x like this this is the format in which we will be getting out the uh, data for us as an output right Ho hope you're just very much clear with this particular thing okay after this um, yes now we have the very last clause which is left to us and that is a group okay now we are having two more um, fine let's discuss the next one now here i have the group group by group by clause okay group by clause what is it used for so this clause is basically used with the select statement to group the students or to group the students okay students is per table name to group the table name on rows or columns having identical values or divide the table into groups okay this function is actually used for uh for how for, for like getting out the rows or the columns which are having identical values or basically it helps you to divide out the table into different different groups right so this is the idea how this is used the so syntax is absolutely same absolutely easy so okay let's let's directly see out the example for this because this the syntax is too much easy that will be i will be explaining with the help of the example only right so let's see out that particular thing uh select the statement comes out here select after that let's i'll be using out my gender column select gender we have from select gender from here goes the student select gender from student group by group by and here comes the gender so what it will actually do it will basically give me the uh, two rows only male and female why because it basically groups size uh, groups uh, the basically the table name onto rows or the columns which are having identical values or divide the table into different groups fine hope you just got out this group by clause very much clearly now after this we are having the very last clause and that is having clause having so let me write that having clause okay now what is it used for so it can be used along with the group by clause in the select statement to place out some several conditions onto the groups okay which can be which can be some aggregate functions or something like that it can be okay so this is the use of this having clause let me again repeat it out that it is this as uh, this is basically used out with the statements to place out the condition on the groups that can include aggregate functions on them okay let's quickly see an example for the having clause 
so i would just use out the statement that is select we have select gender comma what's the count that we are having so the count we are having here as asterisk it means that count everything okay select gender comma count from my table name is a student right so i would just mention that particular thing from a student group by group by uh, we'll be grouping that by gender right group by gender having having place is equal equal to, uh, is equal equal to okay not double equal to here it's not that python i would just like okay so i would just use uh, having place equal to and my place which i'm having that is one second that is 10 okay and here we go so uh, this would actually help me to get out that particular things here the my condition which i have applied that is basically having place is equal equal to chene so it will group by the gender and it will let me know the count of the things which we are having right here fine so these are all now completed uh, commands we have this completed commands we have clauses we have uh, like uh, keywords which come under the select so first of all we discussed regarding the select statement then we had seen the distinct keywords followed by all keyword we had seen where clause between and not between in keyword we saw order by clause order by was ascending and descending then we saw the group by clause and at last it was the having clause right so these were all the keywords and all the uh, commands and even all the clauses which come under this particular dql command which is select a statement right hope you just got out each and everything how to apply the conditions what is the keyword you will be using for applying out the condition which type of conditions are applied with the help of which clause or which keyword hope you are now very much clear with all of these type right, of these queries which commands to use what's what's the condition in which command to use all these things we are now very much familiar with now i do not think so that i need to go more into this thing that what query to use what are different commands what are um different keywords what are the clauses which we have no these are the topics which we have already covered in a very much detail till now now other than this what is the most required thing now that you need to know about that is the correct way for writing out the sub queries and the queries you are now very much familiar very much master in putting out the queries from your side that which which command to use what to use but what's the correct procedure for using that that now we are going to discuss right here so topic for discussion right today is correct way for writing queries correct way for writing out that queries right so basically we have 10 uh, 10 ways here that you should actually follow a uh, uh, like you like use out for writing out the queries okay let's go ahead with um, one by one here so let me quickly take out some color to write a head and go ahead with the thing so let let's take out this one okay very first topic i don't think so that this is too much um visible or something like that okay very very first is that provide the correct format or uh, provide the correct format while writing out a uh, while writing a query while writing a query very important and the very first important thing that you should keep in mind that while writing out a query provide it the correct format now what's the format that first of all we need to use out the select statement right first of all we use out the select statement after select we put out what are the columns name the column names which you want or either you want the whole data so for that we put out the asterisk or basically if we just want out some particular column names so we just put out that column names right after that we put out our a uh, condition like let's say you want to use where or you, what what do we just want to use out we use out that particular command 
other than that if you want to sort out something so we just use the function for sort out if we just want to put out another condition we just put out those conditions this is what is a proper format for writing out any SQL query SQL query right so it is very much important to provide the correct formatting while writing out a query okay what it does now what, what are the like um, reasons that why we do like because we never do anything without a reason what is the reason that why we should provide out a correct format it enhances the readability it also makes reviewing your uh, query in an easier way right these are some uses which provides for writing out the correct format right so this is the idea that it increases out or enhances out the readability it uh, basically makes the troubleshooting review reviewing easier to go ahead with the particular query right some basically are their rules for providing out a correct formatting for a query so that are put each statement in a query in a new line uh, let me write it in a short way. Put uh, push all like, what are the each statements you are having of the query. Put all of them into a new line. Okay. Uh, then let me just come down, get out some space for writing. Okay. After this, um, we would just put out a comma. Then next, basically, put uh, we can just put out the SQL queries in the uh, like what are the keywords SQL keywords we are having. We all just put them into the uppercase. Even when we had just discussed about the keywords into the DQL command there as well i told that whatever the keywords we are having we put all of them into the capitals right i just mentioned those things to you as well. so this is the thing that you will be doing out after that yeah th these are the two things which you can actually do uh, for providing out the correct formatting while writing out a query right hope it is are very much clear with the very first rule moving towards the second rule we have specify specify the select specify the select fields instead of instead of using instead of using select a select asterisk now um, when we when we had actually written out the queries so in that uh, at some cases I told you to write select asterisk and that's at many like uh, only two or three cases were there where I just told you to put on the asterisk sign. Other than that, in all of the fields, I just I just told you to put out a particular column name, right? So why was that? That is actually one more um, correct way, or you could say a rule to specify out the select fields instead of using select asterisk. Why? Now, basically. Uh, Okay, first of all, select asterisk, what is it used for? So that is used for getting out all the data from the table. That you actually know, which we had discussed uh, like as well. Fine. So why it should not be used? So it should not be used till that, till the time your all the data is actually required for a given condition. Let's say you just applied out some condition. In that condition, the select asterisk should not be used at that till point, till the point where your whole data is not required to you. It's nothing of use that every time you are applying out a condition and you are using select asterisk. That is of no use to us. Absolutely, right? That actually just, just makes out the more complexity and all those things, right? So, whatever the conditions whatever the column names you want to put out just put out only and only those column names do not put out asterisk at each and every place do not put out this i know putting out asterisk is super easy you just put out asterisk and as soon as you put out one the symbol single sign you just get out all of the details regarding that data and yes it's easy as well it looks nicer to see out that okay uh, you are getting all the details for this particular condition but do not use that particular thing till the time you are that that information is of no use for you right so hope you just got out my idea which i just wanted to mention out here fine so it basically takes out it is inefficient it slows out the execution of the time of the query these are some things which actually the select asterisk does right here you are understanding everything in an easy way when you are really gonna do out the things onto a like very large database in that case when you're going to put out this asterisk sign it will take a lot of time to execute out the things and that is not at all needed right 
so this is the use that why you should basically specify out some select fields instead of using the select asterisk sign moving towards the third one the third one we basically have the remove correlated uh, correlated sub queries um, sub queries re uh, remove the correlated sub queries if not required if not required okay now basically you need to remove out the correlated sub, sub queries if that are not required now uh, what, is, what is this correlated subquery first of all? It is basically a nested query that depends on the outer query of its values. Whatever the outer query you have put on, this is type of a nested query which comes uh, inside a query, inside a query. This is all, right? Fine. If there are, uh, let's say, let's take an example that if there are millions of users in a database, okay? In that case, the correlated subquery is inefficient. It is, it is absolutely inefficient. Now, you cannot just make many nested subqueries into that, right? And as well, it takes a lot and a lot of time to be executed, right? Because it need to run, run out the millions of, li millions of uh, lines, like millions of times it need, it need to run out the lines, right? So, in that case, it takes a lot of time to be executed. So, we always prefer to not use remove, uh, sorry, we always prefer to remove uh, the correlated queries if that are not required onto our uh, data, onto our condition. So, we do not prefer to put out the nested queries. Okay, if, if it is very much required, then absolutely we are going to do that thing. But yes, if that is not required, so we do not put out this nested query. Right, hope you got this idea as well. Moving towards the fourth way. Okay, moving towards the number four. Uh, okay, just one second right here. Fine, the number four we are having limit the results. Limit the results obtained. Uh, limit the results obtained by the query. Okay, limit the results obtained by the query. Okay, again, as I mentioned in the above one that uh, in the case, in the case limited results are required, it basically used to like it's better to use out the limit statement. What does it do? This uh, statement limits out the records and only displays the number of records specified. Now, again, I would mention the same thing. Let's say you are working on a very, very, very huge database. Now, at every time, you do not want to display out the whole particular column for anything, right? You never want to do that thing because, again, it will be very inefficient. It will take very much time. So, limit is a keyword. Limit is a statement which we use for getting out some specified number of records as an output to us, right? Let's take an example. Let's take there is a very large database of a of million records okay and only the first 10 are required so what you will do you will run out the whole no but that is not at all needed you will only specify that okay i just want only these 10 rows so that 10 will only and only run and you will be getting the uh, answer the output required accordingly right it's not of use it's it's totally a waste of time it's totally a bad procedure if you are having millions of rows and you just want only 10 rows so in that case you will run millions no it's not that easy yes it will just take a lot of time in doing out these particular things so whenever you are having any conditions whenever you are having any limitations whenever you are having some things like that so use out the limit statement to get out only that much number of results for you right and the last point here in for this particular video is remove, remove the, remove the distinct, remove the distinct clause, remove the distinct clause if not required. So distinct is basically one of the clauses which we had already seen and that is used for obtaining out the distinct results from a query by eliminating out the duplicate, right? This is what we had seen. So basically, if possible, so remove out that distinct clauses, uh, basically, if it is not at all required instead of this clause, okay, here it's not required. It is, okay, just let me um, quickly erase that out and once again put on the things here. So here goes the, and here is basically the 
we have removed the distinct clause if not required. Fine, remove out that distinct clause if it is not at all required. Uh, for displaying out the results also, now what it does, it increases the execution of time of the query, right? Because all the field, duplicate fields actually get grouped together. So it is always better to avoid out that distinct clause as much as possible. As an alternative, uh, instead of distinct clause, you could just use out that group by clause, which we had used to obtain out some distinct results, right? Hope you are very much clear with all of these five uh, rules, these, these five ways which I have told you. Still, we are left with five more. So that I'll be covering in the discuss regarding um, the five rules that were for the correct way for writing out the queries. So the first one was to provide the correct format while writing out a query. Right. Second was specify the select fields instead of using select asterisk. Third was remove out the correlated subqueries if not required. Fourth was limit out the results obtained by the query. And fifth was remove that distinct clause if not required. Okay, these were the ones which we have discussed um, in the previous video. So today I will be discussing further. Let's get started. So here it is avoid functions. Avoid functions in predicates. In predicates. Kids. Okay. Um, functions basically avoid of the functions in the predicates of functions in SQL are used to perform the specific actions, right? They are basically quite uh, inefficient. Why? As they do not allow the usage of the index, index, which in turn slows the execution time of the query. Okay. This is the reason that why we do not prefer out using the um, using out the functions in the predicates, right? So uh, always it is better to use uh, to avoid the functions uh, in a query as much as possible to ensure out the optimization things, right? So it is, it's, it is basically the case, which I just wanted to mention out, um, that avoid functions in predicates, okay? Right here. So this was the seventh one, which you should keep in mind. After that, sorry, sixth one, after the seventh, we have avoid avoid or not comma and operators operators if possible avoid or not and and operators if it is possible right um so basically Whenever we uh, use out the or and and not operators, so in that case, we you just try out to avoid that out. Why? Because in the case of basically large databases, it is better to find the replacement for these. Why? To speed up the execution of the query. Whenever you just want to speed up the execution of the query, so uh, in that case, uh, basically try to remove out, try to avoid out the or, not and operators here. Okay, if possible. Uh, as I mentioned that it is highly like it is, it is basically recommended that not to use them in the case of the large, you know, large database. It is, it is better to find out a replacement for these to speed up the execution time of the query. Right, hope you are now okay with this particular one as, uh, okay. Next, we have that use the um, use the where clause use the where clause instead instead of instead of having instead of having clause where, uh, whenever whenever possible whenever possible. So use the where clause instead of having clause when, whenever it is basically possible. Now, um, see the having the like the having clause is used when when we use with the group by clauses, right? So so as to apply the conditions. As where clause cannot be used with aggregate functions. Okay. Uh, use where clause instead of having clause whenever possible, right? So the having clause is used for the group by clause to enforce the conditions as the where clause cannot be used with the aggregate functions. However, basically the having clause does not allow the use of indexes which slow down the execution, the execution of the time of the query. So it's always better to use out the where clause instead of the having clause whenever possible. 
now till the time you are like, like basically whatever the rules whatever the ways whatever the correct ways actually i have told you what are all these correct ways for these all correct ways are totally for saving out the time actually right because because you will be dealing in real be de dealing with a large very large databases so in that case you need to uh, write out the queries in, in such a way that they can be executed in a quick manner so these are some of the rules which you should follow for doing out this particular thing moving towards the next one we basically have that use um use inner join use inner join instead use inner join um instead of use inner join instead of where clause instead of where clause for creating joins this is another thing which you should follow and keep in mind that use out the inner join instead of where clause for creating the joins now where clause is basically used for creating the joins that actually result result in the cartesian products right where the number of rows is the product of the number of rows of the two tables right that is absolutely okay but there is obviously a problem for the large databases as more databases resources are required right so it is always better to prefer out the inner join instead of preferring out um the where clause now the inner join uh, like it that only combines the rows uh for both tables which satisfy out the required condition if basically some required condition is given then only basically it satisfies the uh and it basically combines out the rows so this is the like way that why you should actually use out this inner join instead of uh in inner join instead of where clause for creating out the joins and at last we have the last one that is number 10th and that is avoid avoid wild card wild card characters 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 as the as the beginning as the beginning of a of a like of a of a like clause pattern pattern right so avoid out the wild card characters as the beginning of a like clause pattern wild characters are such as percent signs uh, underscore signs these are the wild card characters so avoid and like what are they used for these are used for uh, filter out the results of a like clause okay basically they should not be used in the beginning of the pattern as uh, this this basically what it does it disables out the database from using the index okay in that case basically a full table scan is required to match out the pattern which consumes more database resources right so it is basically better to avoid out the wild card characters at the beginning of the pattern and only use them at the end if possible right so these are 10 rules these are 10 correct ways for writing out the queries which you should keep in mind even you can just say that these are some rules which you should follow out the very first one is to provide the correct format while writing out a query it's a very important to provide out a correct format while writing out a query second one is basically to specify the select fields instead of using select asterisk right always try to use out the some select columns column names instead of using out the select statement select asterisk actually okay And then we have uh, that remove correlated subqueries if they are not at all required number 4 we are having that limit out the results obtained by the queries okay number 5 we are having to remove that distinct clause if not trick at all required avoid out the functions in the predicates avoid or not and operators if possible use where clause instead of having clause whenever possible use inner join instead of where clause for creating out the joins and avoid wild card characters as beginning of a like clause pattern so these are all the rules rules like correct ways which you should follow and what are all of these things doing these all are actually 
actually they are basically saving out the time for you right they are uh, the first one was enhancing the readability enhancing the executability right rest all the rules the rest all the ways which i told you these are all used for enhancing like used for saving out the time because he because the wherever you'll be dealing with the sql queries you will be having a lot a lot and a lot of large database in which you'll be putting out these queries so in that you cannot have a lot of time to execute one single query because how will you be able to for the procedure on with your with your work right so in that case what do you want you want some queries like that that help you to do out the things in a very a uh, less time and in a easier way so these are some rules these are some correct ways which you can actually follow out for writing out the queries right hope it is got this a particular idea which i mentioned uh, that these are these are some 10 rules which i had written out here summarize them explain you in a very detailed way hope you'll be following these throughout and learning and remembering out these ways for writing out the queries because writing out the queries we have learned a lot of these things till now we are very much familiar that what functions are there how to use out that function what are the syntax is that what pieces these functions are used but apart from one function either of this first function why you should prefer out this using the second function for the same work this is the thing which we have discussed right here right so you should just have a overview you should just follow out this particular thing that why you should use this first fu first function and why you should not use the second command why you should use the second command why not first and the reason for each and every one would almost not not accurately but yeah almost would be same for saving out that time right so now hope you just got out the idea very much clear fully and you're now very much clear that how to how is the correct way for writing out the queries so this is all for this week, all the MySQL uh, for Windows 10 and after that we are going to proceed and write out the queries onto the MySQL and doing the practical for that thing. Right, so what I will be just doing here is that um, I am writing here MySQL download. Okay, as soon as I just wrote out that particular thing, I will be redirected to this page. Um, let me zoom in out so that you are able to see this fine so this is the very first website on to which i would be going on that is http www.mysql.com right i'm just clicking on this particular link okay so this will be the page where i would be coming here and just coming down here i'll be getting an option for mysql community downloads right i'm just clicking on this particular option right here now here I have many options accordingly I could just download that whatever are my system requirements and if you're having Mac or something or something like that you could just download accordingly but right now here I am having Windows so what I would just do is that I'll be clicking on this particular link that is my SQL installer for Windows right I would just click on this particular now here what I just need to do is that I'll be getting out two options for downloading first one is this Windows MSI installer and second one is this windows msi installer both are actually same they both are for the 32 bit but if you are having a 64 bit machine as well so they work on it it is no such issue that if if it did like basically at this particular place 32 bit is written so that won't work on 64 right so what i which is doing here is that i'll be clicking on this download one above i would not be downloading because see just just see how the numbers as well right accordingly that will be choosing out and it is coming on this particular one so just let me click on download here so it's asking me that uh, login or sign up or something like that so first of all i would just click on no thanks just start my download so as soon as i'm just doing out this thing just have a look down downside that one of the msi files are getting downloaded so it is of 451 mb so it will take a little bit of time uh, for the downloading this depends on your internet speed what you are actually having out right so here it is getting uh, downloaded and after it is getting downloaded after that we'll be going on for the installation process so in that there are many options which will be choosing out that okay what you want to install for what you want to install what are the other features which you want to do and rest of the things will be seeing out right so here we have downloaded now i'll just click on this particular okay so it is showing to prepare for the my configure my sql installer account it is preparing for that now it is asking me to make the changes i would just click on yes right 
fine after clicking on yes i'm just redirected to this particular place and it will take right let's see it will take a little bit of time see it's showing that time remaining six seconds and three and something like that showing out fine so it's asking me to that do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device so i will just click on yes here right do not click on no otherwise all of the things will be dismissed at that particular place right but we do not want out that thing fine so as soon as you have done out the things, you'll be getting out your window like this. Now, in the starting, I was telling you that basically you'll be getting many options for the uh, like what type of downloadation you just want for this MySQL. Right now, here we have the developer type. You have developer default, you have server, or server only, you have client, you have full and here you have custom as well. Right, so I'm just clicking on this custom because I would manually choose out my products that I need to install. So allow just uh, see what it is written that allows you to select exactly which project you would like to install. This also allows to pick other server versions and architectures. Right, so I would, I would be just choosing out on my own that what are the things I just want to install with this MySQL. Right, so uh, okay, I would just click on this custom and just come to the next place. Now here we have many options from which you want to choose. So first of all, I just want my SQL server to be downloaded. So just click on this plus sign. Again, just click on this plus sign. Again, click on the plus sign. And yes, here I will be selecting this. Now the first arrow which you are able to see, just click on this. So here we have a list that whatever the products you need to install, all those products will be listed at this particular place. So I have just listed out first of all my SQL server. Then let's see that what is there in application. So in application, I have MySQL Workbench, I have Visual Studio, I have Shell, I have Routers. Let's do it for the Workbench as well. So I'm just installing the Workbench and yeah, here I would just click on and take it to the other side. Okay, Workbench is done. Then let's install the Shell as well. So I would just click on the Shell as well. So it is as well gone on to the next place. And what is there in MySQL Connectors? So yeah, this is basically used that if you just want to connect it with the C++ or G or NET or whatever. So I would just click on this connector for the Python because I'm just uh, installing that thing as well for me. So here and after onto this particular place. Right, so these are the four things that I would be installing here. First of all is my MySQL server, then I have uh, Workbench, then we have Shell and then we have connector slash Python. Click on the next. Now here basically, Yes, so this my server, uh, this is done and okay, it is installed directly fine. Okay, so I would, what I would just do is that I would be just taking out it to a new place. Let's say I would just simply do it on to the desktop. Um, okay, in the desktop, I would be doing it for the SQL. Fine, click on okay. Right here. Now we just click on the next button. Uh, okay, you selected path. I just want to continue um yes right now basically here i have four things so all of these four things we will be installing here these four things will be installed so what i would just do i would just click on this execute right so all of them will be installing one by one see the server is basically having some progress for the installation after that we'll be moving towards the workbench then here we'll go out the shell and then we'll be the slash the connector slash so these are the four, these are the four installed that will be installed here one by one see the first one has been the status is showing here completed for the workbench as well it's progressing so for workbench as well just basically installing out the things right so as soon as the workbench is installed after that this shell would be installed and after that this connector slash python would be installed so these are many things which i have been i would be installing at this particular place now as I mentioned the starting as well, that it totally depends on you that what are the things you want to install here. We had seen many more options at that particular place, right? We had seen that there was um, the like we were having server, we were having workbench, shell, we have we were having different connectors like uh, they were for the C++ or J or net, whatever they were having, right? So further we'll be discussing about the connector with uh, that how to connect the like MySQL databases with the Python. So in that case, I just used out this connector for the Python. So I'm just installing that right here. If you do not want, then it's no, not that much compulsory that you do it right now. You could just do that particular thing afterwards as well, whenever you are just going to need out that thing or something like that. Right, now just have a look that this workbench is as well installed. Now the shell and this connector, these are the two things that take a little bit of time for the installation. So we'll be installing them right here. 
So here at this particular place, all of these have been installed. This uh, MySQL server, MySQL workbench, and the shell and the connector for the Python. All of have been completed. And see here, the status is showing us complete, right? Um, now just go on to the next button. So just let's click on next. And yes, ready to configure. Click on next right here. So basically, this is for the type and networking. Here, what are we have one port? Okay, you could just change out this mess, uh, this number which is written out here, but you should remember this out, whatever if you are changing any. Right. So here at this particular place, what is gonna happen that you could just put out this number accordingly or whatever the number is present right now. You could just take take that particular number as well. Um. Okay, just one second. Right here. Okay. So any anything of them works actually. Fine, so I would just not change it right here. If you just want, you could do that accordingly. And I would just go on to the next here. So here we have two authentication methods. First one is that use the strong password encryption for authentication. And second one is um, use legacy authentication method. So I would just go on to the first option only, which is strong password, right? Click on next here. Now, uh, okay, so here actually I just need to quick quickly put out my current root password which i was having so that is somewhat i would just put on that so okay now here what will come here for you entering the option would come out okay uh, for me it's not coming because that was once i had already installed that onto my device that's why it's asking me that uh, previous one only but as soon as i have like uh, right now for you there must be an option for putting out one time password then then repeat out that particular password and downside it was it will be asking you that add a user on something like that so you do not need to click on that anything simply put out your password and then put out your reset and like to recheck out the password and then click on the next button right so here this is your service name that is okay standard system uh, account uh, uh, every everything let, let, let that be like this only whatever is applied here and just click on the next right and here uh, click on the execute so see now every of them will be executed line by line here see all of the files which i am having here the, these would be executed so first one was basically the writing the configuration file then updating windows payable rules then we have adjusting windows service starting the server updating the start menu link so i would just click on the finish button right now uh, okay just one thing to let you know here that uh, basically if any uh, for if it is installing that and something comes between for the microsoft visual c plus plus and they ask you to execute that or something so just click on the execute or the run button which you were having onto that microsoft visual c plus plus right if it comes for me it's not coming out so click on next and yeah click on the finish here so uh, there were two options for starting out the workbench and starting out the shell as well. So I've just clicked on both of these options. So see, first of all, my shell has been opened here for my SQL. And right now the workbench is as well starting, right? So see, this is how the workbench actually looks like. I would just click on this particular option. And okay, for you, it must be asking to put out the password. So yeah, just put out the password first of all. And after that downside, there would must be a checkbox. So click that checkbox as well, because I have already put on the password and this was once installed onto my device. So it is not asking me to again and again put out the password, right? Just do out the settings. And yes, this is how the whole workbench looks like. This is where we just write out the quotes and downside the like the uh, rectangular box, which you are able to see here. We just see out the like outputs, whatever we are having. After that, this button, which you are able to see here in this between one, right? This is basically used to execute out the statement. Okay, this is basically if you are executing out the query, a selected part of a script then this first button is used out and if you are executing the whole statement with the keyboard cursor so this particular uh, like sign is used or a second one okay so these were the two important options regarding this uh, workbench and after as we move towards the next video so from next video we'll be start implementing out the queries onto this workbench and let's see how are the queries executed how we can just make out the databases what are the ones which are already stored here and how we can just use them all, right? We'll be seeing tickle the steps onto this MySQL workbench, which we have already installed into the previous video, right? We had seen out the correct procedure um, that how you can install out this MySQL workbench and the shell and the connector with Python, all of these things we had already seen into the previous video. So today, right in this particular video, 
we are going to write out some queries for creating out the database for checking out the database and some stuffs like that right let's get started so quickly without jumping on to the uh, stuffs for writing out the things i would just want you to take on to the page where we had discussed about the commands because from these commands only we will be going ahead and checking out and writing out the queries right the command today which i'm going to use out is ddl command this very first one right so that is the full form is data definition language so from this ddl command there are some uh, five to six topics which come under this some five to six sub queries that come here which is create drop and then we have alter we have truncate we have comment and we have rename right these are the six queries which come under this particular thing let me go on to that page itself right yeah so here comes the data definition language what was that used for that was actually used for defining out the database structure or the schema right so um the case where you just want to uh, like define out the database in that case we just use out this data definition language right and it is as well used to specify out the additional properties of the data fine so first of all i'll be using out the very first command that is the create command so that is used to create out the objects in the database so let's go on to the mysql workbench and start writing out some stuffs onto this particular place right so for all of you this this particular uh, file must be visible if you have downloaded the mysql so i would just zoom in the things and let me just take this down so that we just get out some proper space for writing fine now whenever uh, the whenever we are just going to write out some queries so the very first thing that we do is that we create out a database right without creating out a database you cannot put out the tables you cannot put out any columns you cannot put out any rows in that particular database right the very first step that we do is we create out a database so what's the procedure for creating out the database let me just once again go on to the one note here for a while and let me just come to this place and one second let me just go above right here so this was the command which we have already seen that how to create out a database so just have a look what we do we just first we write out the create that is the query after that we put out the table and then we write out the table name that for what table you just want to create out or what is table name for which you just want to create out in the same procedure only we just create out a database as well in, the, in that case i just told you how to create out the table right the, even the process for creating out the database is as well same what i would do, i would just simply write out here first of all create now this is the keyboard you can say this is the keyboard which is used for creating out the table and as well as creating out the database as well right so i would just write create database right this is how we just write out the database so this is the place and this is how we just write out um one second give it a space and after that give, give out the name for your database whatever the name you just want to put on for the database which you are making out right um let's say i would be just giving out the name as um let's say um, okay that is demo one okay demo one my database name right this is how we just write out a query here fine so the create was one of the keywords which we have taken the database as well was the same and demo one is the name for my database which i just wanted to give out now whenever you are having one single query so in that case you could just simply go and put on and run on any of these two buttons whichever you just wish like okay but whenever you have written out many queries and you just want to run out any particular query so in that case we just select out this particular hole like this okay we select out the things like this and then you click on this run buttons okay first one is the execute the selected portion so you would just click on this first um yellow button right one thing i had just missed out that after writing all the queries in sql we just put out a semicolon as well right so i just put on that particular thing as well here now i will be selecting this out and clicking on the run button now just let me just uh, maximize this thing so that you are able to see out the things clearly see uh, here basically we just got out the action that create database demo one so one row affected so it means that my database which i was planning that has been created out at this particular place right now i would just again minimize that out here at this place only fine so my database has been now created fine so this is done 
now whenever i just want to put on some um any any row or any column any table inside this database so we use this function with that is use okay we use this like use and you just need to write out your um, database name whichever you just want to use out now i want to use out this demo one right the, the database which we have recently made out that is demo one i just want to use that out here so i just simply wrote use demo one now i would select this particular portion and run that out so see here it is basically showing out let me again maximize that particular thing so it's showing that use demo one zero rows affected right and even it shows out the duration as well to you that what is the duration that has been taken um the time and it shows the score uh, so numerical values like one two three four uh, according to the numbers right this is how it actually goes out fine so this demo one has now been created here okay first of all we created out the database so this is how we create out the database next when you just want to use out that particular database so this is how you just use out the database now next thing comes is that you just want to delete out or drop out the database which you have created right the third function which i have listed out here that is drop function let me come down here or modify stand describe this is the drop function right drop means to remove out that particular uh, database right so just see out delete objects from the database fine so now in this case let we'll be seeing out that how you can drop out a particular database whichever you are having so i would just go on to that particular slide once again and yeah this is how the command uh, works out you first of all put out that drop function after that you write out the respective table name and yeah that's okay after simply putting out the drop you just write out the table and after that simply just write out the uh, that uh, database name whichever you just want to drop out so let me just go on to the my sql workbench once again here and let me write out the things right here so i would just write out here as drop and after that i just right now i just want to drop out a particular database so i would be mentioning out the same drop database right and after that i have the database which i just want to drop out and that is demo one for me right so drop database and then demo one so drop is basically the command which will help you to delete out the objects delete out the objects from that particular database now objects will be deleted from the table right but right here we haven't made out any particular table so in that case we are simply deleting out the database so for that you just use out the drop function after that you write out the database because you just want to drop out the database in case you want to drop out any table so instead of this database you would have written table at that particular place right that is done and at last you just simply write out the name of that particular database which you just want to delete out right and now i would just click on this particular button and execute that out right so in the downside it is showing me drop database demo one this much of rows affected and this much of time has been whenever it shows the tick mark here so it means that whatever the query you have written out that has been executed and in case it is showing out the cross mark so in that case uh, it's the case that your query has not been executed till now right i would just give you an example for that cross mark as well so that you are very much clear with that um, okay let's remove out this colon from here right and now i would be just running this out here fine and here you just now are able to see that see this red cross button is coming here right it means that you have some error here even it is showing you that error code 1008 cannot drop database demo 1 database does not exist right why it is showing you error like this because you haven't uh, mentioned out the proper syntax you just missed out that particular colon from you right so this is the reason and now if i just again try on running this out now it is again showing me this same thing why because once i have already dropped out this particular database so that is the reason when i am again and again running out this particular query so it's showing me that this database does not exist this database does not does not exist because once i have already run out this particular query so one uh, one action you can perform at in only one single time it's not the case 
that you have dropped out the database again and again you are running out a single query no it's not that case it is going to show you some type of errors right so hope you first of all got the idea that how you create out a database how do you just use out that particular database and how you drop out the database right now we have done all of these things till now but how to check that uh, the database we had seen out that how you can use out this alter function and even how you could just use out this truncate function as well right these were the things which we had seen into the previous video now today in this particular video we are going to see that how you can insert out the values for these particular columns how you can insert out the rows onto this particular table which we had made out and that is implied right so now we are just going to see out this into insert function and that is that comes under the dml command so let me just um, see the okay this is allow and this one is basically that describe the create also describe add and okay these are the things right here then we have um okay this this is a tcl command okay that is okay this is the dql command right so here the select comes and fine okay i would just let you know that thing onto that particular place only before that here we come for the insert right First of all, let's take an idea about that DML command that what is that DML command used for? Fine, the DML full form for that is basically the data manipulation language. And these statements are particularly used for managing out the data within a schema object, right? What are the objects you are having out? So these are the commands which are used for managing out the data. There are total two types of DML commands that is a data manipulation language. First one is the procedural and second one is the declarative so what about the procedural one so it requires a user to specify that what data are needed and how to get those data so when you the case that a user need to specify that what are the data needed and how to get out that data so that particular section come uh, comes under the procedural dml and what about the declarative one so uh, require a uh, require user to specify what data are needed without specifying how to get those data. So when the condition is that you need to specify that what data is needed, but you do not need to specify that how to get out those data. So in that case, we simply just use out this declarative DML. So first of all, hope you are clear with both of these conditions, both of these two types, which I mentioned about the procedural and about the declarative. Right, then under that we have this insert that is used for inserting out the data into the table. Let's now go on to the SQL workbench and see how the practical for this particular thing. Right, inserting a data now. You, we had uh, till now we had just made out our uh, table. We had first of all made out the data, then we had made out the table. We had checked out, we have altered, we had added some columns onto that table. These are all the functions which we have performed till now. Now it's the time for adding out some uh, rows, some values into the data so that we can perform out several other operations onto this, right? Let's get started with that. So here first of all comes out my insert function that I was mentioning that we'll be using out this insert. So there comes the insert function. After that, I'll be using out this into. Into means that we are to insert out. So where I need to insert? I need to insert that into the employee table, right? Into the employee table right so it's it is insert into imply putting out the bracket now what are the ways and sorry what are the column names which you are having out so let's go and check that out for a while that was employee id employee name employee book and the email so let's put them all up down here so that is employee id okay putting out a comma we have employee uh, name again putting out a comma employee id employee name uh, yes, then we were having employee work, right? And then we were having one last part is the email, right? So I just listed all, all of these here that what is the work of all of these particularly, right? So insert into employee, insert into my table name. These are the columns which we have into the uh, into the, this particular table. Now, what values you want to enter? So here comes the values, putting out the bracket here, now i'll be giving out different values onto this so first one basically my employee id so simply i could just simply write out here one separated by a comma then what are the next things that we are having we were having employee name okay 
so okay let's say my employee name is um, arun okay my employee name fine putting out a comma what about then okay what about the next we were having we were having the employee work right so let me just move uh, forward yeah employee work and then email what is the work of this employee so this employee is basically let's say um okay software engineer okay engineer engineer fine this this particular uh person let's say software engineer and what's the email id okay so email id let's let it be like that uh, let it be arun at the rate at the rate gmail.com this is the email id of this particular person right this is how we put out and we insert out the values into our table i would just select out this particular command and i would just run it out here see on to the downside it has been basically it is this particular command worked out for me at the last one right now i would just take this again down here and now what i would just do is that let me just um uh, okay what i would just do i would just try to describe this one describe and now it's time to run that out okay so in the description just coming that same only okay let's result close this out here for a while for a while and okay let's do one thing first of all let's insert out all of the values whichever you just want to insert into this and after that we are going to see out the rest of the stuffs right that how to execute and all all those things fine so here i'll be getting here again insert into then we have um employ e m p l o y insert employ here we come with the okay now what i would just do is that i would be copying out this things because i'm just not going to write out these things again and again here so it's control c and comes the paste out option here coming to a new line uh, what has happened to oh, fine and here comes the option for the values and inside the bracket what are the values that i'm going to get out so let's say it is the two name is let's say seema okay putting out a comma let's say let's say she is the okay let's say she is the business analyst right putting out once again a comma and now you let's say the email id is seema at the read gmail.com fine and closing out the bracket right here okay one thing to be mentioned out here i just need to put out a semicolon at the last and here as well at the last right okay first of all op just got out the idea that how we just try to run out these things now what i would just do is that i would just select out some statements okay i would just use out my select function and try to run out some statements from here so that is let's say i'm just Uh, giving it a try that what are the things i'm just writing are they going correct or not afterwards we will be adding some more values and some inserting some more things into this as well okay select and okay here comes the employee underscore id from and what's my table name my table name is employee right and putting out the comma like this and now it's the time for running out this okay I, i haven't run out this particular statement let's run that out here fine that is completely okay and now i'll be running this as well here right to see employee id are coming for me one and two right here you are able to see i guess fine this is how you would be able to see out the things and yeah whatever we are just writing right here that is absolutely correct right this is the way for checking out the things that whatever you are entering let's say i just remove out this employee id and i just put on here as name okay and now if i just try to again run out this particular statement see my employee name is arun and seema right so this is how you could just again i'm just again saying this is how you could just uh, check out that whatever the things you are actually writing out here are these going correct or basically whatever the data you are entering out here is that getting uh, saved is that getting stored on to the tables or not right let me just give you again an overview whatever we had done out first of all we used out this truncate function after that we were now trying to insert out the values on to the column names which ever we were having so my column names which i was having that was employee id it was employee name employee work and the email 
right these four were the columns that i was having so into that i just started entering out the values id was ban name was arun and let's say employee work was software engineer and the email i had just mentioned out here as well same thing i have just done for the second one as well right right here i was just checking that are these two things going correct or not so that is the reason i just used to run out this select a statement here right otherwise i would have entered some more values into this and then have run this out so we'll be entering some more values into the next video right here but here i just used out the select function to check out whether the things that are writing are they correct or not there are several different ways for the select as well that we'll be discussing here we had already seen that how you can create out a database how you can use that database and how you can drop out the database so in the last video i just left out you with one of the questions that how you can check that whether the database which you have deleted or dropped is that particular database deleted or not right so the answer for this thing i'll be giving in this particular video right here we just created the database we just used out that particular database and at last we have dropped that out right now i just want to check that is that database really dropped out or not so in that case we have a function and that is show okay i would just write out here show and after that i would simply write out here databases what does this do the show databases is one of the queries which helps me to see that what are the databases which are present into your data okay what are the databases which you have into this particular my sql workbench what are the databases that are there right this is the query which helps us to see that so i would just select this out and let's run this out here now have a look here i don't know that whether it's visible to you clearly or not if you're just using out the phone so it must not be visible to you but if you're using laptop so yeah i can see it, it is visible so i could just minimum increase this other than that i am not able to do out any particular thing here fine let, let's go ahead here on to the left hand side of the corner i'm getting out a database as a column and under that column i'm getting many of the databases let's say these are created my by me at some previous time or something like that but here you are not able to see out that demo one database which we had created right now right now what's the reason for that okay in this particular case we just created out this database that is the name as demo one and it at this particular place only we just dropped this database as well dropping the data means means to de to delete out that database so that's the reason that you are not able to see out the database at this particular place right what i would just do here is that i'll be closing out this result from here i would again execute the first line so whenever i just want to execute any line multiple times i simply select out that line and click on the run button fine so up downside i just got create database that is okay now if i execute out this show databases now if i execute this statement out have a look that here now i have just got out my database that is demo one the name for that database is demo one and yes this was only the name for the database which we had made out right now what's the reason that i have get out here because this time i haven't dropped out this particular database right so hope you just got the idea that uh, how you can just use out a particular database right now whenever you just want to create out a table so for creating out a table we just need to select out a database in which you would be creating out that particular table let me just first of all take it down side take this as well down right here now it's the space for writing out right now what i would be just doing here is that i would be creating out a table but before creating out a table i need to select out a database inside which i just want this table so i would be selecting out this demo one here okay i just selected that now just click on this and that's been selected now it's come here okay so yeah we had already seen out the command for creating out the table here right so okay just one second right here so let me just go on to the one note here for a while and create the table here right what is this create function used for it is used to create out the objects in the database right to so create table table name and what was the column name you would just want to give out give that and after that give out the data type for that particular column name again column name and what are the n number of column names you just want to give out you can give that right see 
I just create as an example previously. I just created out a table. The name for that was T2. Right. After that, I was having one of the columns here that was IT, and the the data type for that was in T2. The next column I was having here was name, and the data type for that was varchar, and the phone number was as well in T2. Some sort, some same sort of things we are just gonna make out here as well. So let's get started. I would just write out here as create, okay? Table. My uh, like I just want to create out a table. Create table, and okay. What name you just want to give out to your table? So my name for my table would be employee. Okay, right here. Put out the bracket. Come to the new line. Give it a tab space. Okay, here now just give out the column name. Whatever you just want to give. So I would just want to give out here the column name first as employee underscore it. My first column name. What type is it belonging to? That is the integer, right? So yeah, I just put on int there. Putting out a comma and now coming to a new line. Next, what you want to give? I want to give out here the employee name. So that is done. And here I'm writing out here as var car. Right, var car is basically whenever you are just taking out any string. So in that uh, string format, we just use out this var car. Okay. And putting out the bracket and giving it a limit. Let's say my limit, which I've just given out here, is 200. Right, it means that uh, one particular name can be of 200 words, not more than that. Right, it's giving out a sort of range here. Right, this is done. Employee ID, employee name. Okay, so I would just write out employee next. Next one is employee underscore work. Let's say that word work that particular employee do. Right, so this will as will be in the var car only because that's again a sort of a a character or a string one so again i just give out here as 200 now coming down and going back this is how we just do out the things see now i just closed out the bracket here now please make sure to put out these all of the things which are here in the very much alignment see my bracket starts from here and it ends up at this particular place even you are able to see out this one line as well so it means that the things which you are writing out, these all are in the proper alignments. Okay. Now, next thing to note down here is that you are creating out a table and a name for that table is employee. Right. Now to this employee uh, table, what are the columns that I am giving out? I'm giving out the column name that is employee ID. Right. Now ID would be into the integer format. Right. So that is. So that is I just mentioned out here as int. Fine. Next, we are having the employee name, right? So that employee name will be in the characters. That is the string. Fine. So in that case, I just mentioned out here as var char. Now we just whenever we are sticking out any string, so in that case, we just need to give out a limit as well. That okay. What's the limit that you are gonna get give out here for making out this for like for giving out this particular values in the column, right? So that is 200 for me here. Next comes here one another column which I just wanted to make out that is employee underscore work, right? So that work is as well in the character format. So that comes after that. I just close out my bracket and put out the semicolon. Now, just one thing more to mention out here. Many of you must be thinking that you mentioned of the comma here, you mentioned the comma here as well, but you did not mention of the comma here. Why? Because that's not the correct syntax, that's not the correct way for creating out a table, okay. So this is the reason that I just told, I just mentioned, I just did not mention out the comma here. So I would just now select this particular part and execute that out. Okay, so let's see what it is giving to us. Um, fine. Uh, create table, no database selected, select the default. Okay, let's select out a database here as well. So, okay, let's click on show databases. Let's click that out and choose out this demo one and now let's run out the these things right now let's again run this out here so, okay fine so again just, just let's see let's see what it is giving me actually right here um no database selected select out the database okay okay i'm so sorry we just need to execute out this statement which is use one 
okay use demo one and now after that i will be just clicking on again this particular part right so now that has been executed let me show you here find last check out the last one so see create table and this much has been executed and this much of rows have been affected fine so now that the table which i was supposed to make out that has been made now i was just getting out some error i just saw that even i just told you how to do that but if you haven't noticed that out so let me again tell you um that whenever you are creating out a database you need to select out a data uh, sorry whenever you are creating out a table you need to select out a database so database which i have selected here i just first of all need to execute this particular line that is use this particular database and after that i just need to execute this table one then only it will basically give you the output otherwise it would show you that no database selected no database selected right so make sure to remember out these things these small things are very much important if you are uh, just coming into learning the mysql or if you're just new person in the mysql right so hope you just got out the idea that how you can first of all check out the databases and then how you can just create out the table now how to see out the table and how to we had seen now that how you can use of this alter function and even how you could just use of this truncate function as well right these were the things which we had seen into the previous video now today in this particular video we are going to see that how you can insert out the values for these particular columns how you can insert out the rows onto this particular table which we had made out and that is imply right so now we are just going to see out this into insert function and that is that comes under the dml command so let me just um, see the okay this is allow and this one is basically the describe the create also describe add and okay these are the things right here then we have um okay this this is a tcl command okay that is okay this is the dql command right so here the select comes and fine okay i would just let you know that thing onto that particular place only before that here we come for the insert right first of all let's take an idea about that dml command that what is that dml command used for fine the dml full form for that is basically the data manipulation language and these statements are particularly used for managing out the data within a schema object right what are the objects you are having out so these are the commands which are used for managing out the data there are total two types of dml commands that is a data manipulation language first one is the procedural and second one is the declarative so what about the procedural one so it requires a user to specify that what data are needed and how to get those data so when you is the case that a user need to specify that what are the data needed and how to get out that data so that particular section come uh, comes under the procedural dmls and what about the declarative one so uh require a uh, require a user to specify what data are needed without specifying how to get those data so when the condition is that you need to specify that what data is needed but you do not need to specify that how to get out those data so in that case we simply just use out this declarative dml so first of all hope you are clear with both of these conditions both of these two types which i mentioned about the procedural and about the declarative right then under that we have this insert so that is used for inserting out the data into the table let's now just go on to the sql workbench and see out the practical for this particular thing right inserting a data now you we had uh, till now we had just made out our uh, table we had first of all made out the data then we had made out the table we had checked out we have altered we had added some columns onto that table these are all the functions which we have performed till now now it's the time for adding out some uh, rows some values into the data so that we can perform out several other operations onto this right let's get started with that so here first of all comes out my insert function that i was mentioning that we'll be using out this insert so there comes the insert function after that i'll be using out this into into means that we are to insert out so where i need to insert i need to insert that into the employee table right into the employee table right so it's it is insert into employee putting out the bracket now what are the ways and sorry what are the column names which you are having out so let's go and check that out for a while that was employee id employee name employee book and the email so let's put them all up down here so that is employee id okay putting out a comma we have employee 
uh, name again putting out a comma employee id employee name uh, yes then we were having employee work right and then we were having one last part is the event right so i just listed all all of these here that what is the work of all of these particularly right so insert into employee insert into my table name these are the columns which we have into the into the this particular table now what values you want to enter so here comes the values putting out the bracket here now i'll be giving out different values onto this so first one basically my employee id so simply i could just simply write out here one separated by a comma then what are the next things that we are having we were having employee name okay so okay let's say my employee name is um, arun okay my employee name fine putting out a comma what about then okay what about the next we were having we were having the employee work right so let me just move uh, forward here yeah. employee work and then email what is the work of this employee so this employee is basically let's say um okay software engineer okay engineer engineer find this this particular uh person let's say software engineer and what's the email id okay so email id let's let it be like that uh, let it be arun at the rate at the rate gmail.com this is the email id of this particular person right this is how we put out and we insert out the values into our table i would just select out this particular command and i would just run it out here see on to the downside it has been basically this this particular command worked out for me at the last one right now i would just take this again down here and now what i would just do is that let me just um, uh, okay what i would just do i would just try to describe this one describe and now it's time to run that out okay so in description just coming that same only okay let's results close this out here for a while for a while and okay let's do one thing first of all let's insert out all of the values whichever you just want to insert into this and after that we are going to see out the rest of the stuffs right that how to execute and all all those things fine so here i'll be getting here again insert into then we have um employ e m p l o y insert employ here we come with the okay now what i would just do is that i'll be copying out this things because i'm just not going to write out these things again and again here so it's control c and comes the paste out option here coming to a new line uh, what has happened to oh, fine and here comes the option for the values and inside the bracket what are the values that i'm going to get out so let's say it is the two name is let's say seema okay putting out a comma let's say let's say she is um okay let's say she is the business analyst right putting out a once again a comma and now you let's say the email id is seema at the rate gmail.com fine and closing out the bracket right here okay one thing to be mentioned out here i just need to put out a semicolon at the last and here as well at the last fine okay first of all hope you just got out the idea that how we just try to run out these things now what i would just do is that i would just select out some statements okay i would just use out my select function and try to run out some statements from here so that is let's say i'm just uh, giving it a try that what are the things i'm just writing are they going correct or not afterwards we'll be adding some more values and some inserting some more things into this as well okay select and okay here comes the employee underscore id from and what's my table name my table name is employee right and putting out the comma like this and now it's the time for running out this okay i, I haven't run out this particular statement so let's run that out here fine that is completely okay and now i'll be running this as well here right to so see employee id are coming for me one and two right here you are able to see i guess fine 
this is how you would be able to see out the things and yeah whatever we are just writing right here that is absolutely correct right this is the way for checking out the things that whatever you are entering let's say i just remove out this employee id and i just put on here as name okay and now if i just try to again run out this particular statement see my employee name is arun and seema right so this is how you could just again i'm just again saying this is how you could just uh, check out that whatever the things you are actually writing out here are these going correct or basically whatever the data you are entering out here is that getting uh, saved is that getting stored onto the tables or not right let me just give you again an overview whatever we had done out first of all we used out this truncate function after that we were now trying to insert out the values onto the column names whichever we were having so my column names which i was having that was employee id it was employee name employee work and the email right these four were the columns that i was having so into that so i just started entering out the values id was ban name was arun and let's say employee work was software engineer and the email i had just mentioned out here as well same thing i have just done for the second one as well right right here i was just checking that are these two things going correct or not so that is the reason i just used to run out this select statement here right otherwise i would have entered some more values into this and then have run this out so we'll be entering some more values into the next video right here but here i just used out the select function to check out whether the things that are writing are they correct or not previous video we were just actually seeing out that uh, how you can insert out the values into the table which we had already made out right so the table uh, okay this was a table which we had made out the name for that was particularly that was employee and it was consisting of in total three columns first of all that was um, employee id we were having employee name and even the employee book so the name and work these two were the strings so that is why the reason i had taken here the var car as my data type right <clears throat> and if i talk about the id so that id one was the integer here because the yeah, ids are an integer one two three for some integer value so that was the reason that here i had taken the integer as uh, for the data type right then we are just going to the various stuffs here all of those things i must be clear to you then we were in trying to insert out the values into this particular um, table which we had made out right so the procedure was i would just not explain the procedure i would again give you an example for that that how we will be able to do out this particular thing right so i would just simply write out here insert and after that insert comes my into function so insert into and what's my table name in which i want to insert all of these things so that is employee for me right and what about the columns which i'm having into this particular um, table so the first one is my employee underscore id um then i am having employee name after that i was even having the work of the employee that was employee work and at last i was having the email one right these were the um, columns which we were having into our uh, employee table right coming to the new line i would be now using here the values values is basically my a uh, value that now what are the values that you are going to give to these particular um, um columns which are actually entered out here right so okay the id would be three let's say name would be let's say mohan and then let's say what is the job so let's say job i would just again put on some same that is the software or engineer let's say that is okay that is e n g i w -E n e n w -E r okay after that what was the next thing next one was my email id so that i could just um simply put out here that uh, simply i could just write out mohan at the rate gmail.com right this is the one other thing which i could put and now it's the time for running that out for running what we do if we just want to run out any particular um query so in that case we just simply select out that particular portion and just click on this run button right okay um check the manual okay you have any error in this sql okay let's check out what's the error that we had made okay the bracket is isn't closed and even the semicolon is also missing out fine
let's again select out these two lines and now run it out fine so now basically it front uh, okay now these are executed let me show you as well so yeah check out this last one that is present out here this is one for the mohan and the software engine and all those things right so that one is actually executed out i would copy out these things here and i just want to give it some more value so that whatever the operations i am planning i could just actually perform them out right so let's see that what are the changes that we need to make out here so okay after two three okay here it would be four for me and down to this would be five okay um okay let's say we just want to put out some name as well so name i'll be putting out let's say name is ria work is let's say that is um date, okay that is let's say data analyst okay and email id would be let's say name is ria so that would be ria at the rate gmail.com same thing applies for the id number five some name to be given out here let's say give it as um okay let's give it as rohan and what about the employer so okay what is the work that this particular person is doing so for that i'll be giving out here as a business analyst once we have given this right yes business analyst and here comes the analyst now you must be wondering that why i am giving out the same values here and why i am making out all of these things because in the further uh, things i just want to execute out some queries that are belonging to these things so that's the reason that i'm importing out and putting out some more values into this particular case and one more time i'll be putting out these two values after that we'll be uh, proceeding on for the further queries right this five is completed here comes the six and okay just let me come down right and okay first let me just take out the select the statement downside and here comes the seven right okay so giving out some name let's say name is mira software engine let that be and let's make it to uh mira right fine next name i just want to give out here i would be just giving out let's say some name as um <clears throat> okay let's give out some girl's name as well let's give it as sita and so instead of software engineer now i'll be putting out here the data what was that data analyst i guess right that was analyst so yeah here analyst and giving out um, again the email id so here comes the name of the, the sita sita fine now what i'll be just doing is that i would just select all of these queries at one time and i would just try to execute all of them right so if any one of them have been left out here so all of them will be executed at one single go so till here i had selected and click on this execute right so yeah all of them have been now executed for me at this point okay after this three only seven one is okay i just need to execute them manually it could not work like this right let's do it for the number fourth let's run that out okay ria has been done let's now do it for number five uh okay yeah number five as well okay so that is still executing i guess yeah it's been executed now after that let's come down and take it for the number six here so and executed at this particular place so fine six has been again executed and now it's at our last time for the seventh one so selecting out the seventh one and executing that out as well right all of them have been executed now if i run out this particular statement which we have written out select employee name from employee if i run that out see what are the employee names that i'm getting i'm getting arun seema mohan then sita ria rohan meera and sita now why i am getting this mohan two times because this particular statement has been i guess has been executed two times right so this is the reason and i am getting it two times 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 okay okay sita is as well executed two times so that is the reason i am getting it two times right here okay so this is the reason for getting the things two times fine what i would just do is start in uh, okay let's i just want the employee name i want the let's say in uh, sorry i just want to let's say email as well right so i would just put on email here again i'm putting out a comma 
and I would be running this at this particular place. Now just have a look that see email has came here and employee name is here. One another thing is there you could just simply uh, take out the column and put it like this. So this would be changed. First email would come then employee name. Like this you can just perform out um, these things here at this particular place, right? That is done. Now what is the case when I just want to select out the whole table? I just want to check out the whole uh, table which I'm having the all the columns or the rows at one single go. So in that case, we just use out the select statement with the asterisk sign. Okay, we just put out this asterisk sign. We just write select asterisk from and my table name. So that table for name for me is employee, right? So in that case, select asterisk from employee. This is the statement which would help me to get out all the details of the rows and all, all the rows, all the columns at one single time. This is the um, this is the command you can say it is used out, right? I would just run this out here and let me just maximize out the things here. Fine, so just have a look that we had made out four columns. The first one was my employee ID, second one was my employee name, third one was my employee work, and fourth one was my email. Right, all those four I'm getting out here. Now, just one thing to mention at this particular place that some things are being repetitive here, right? So we would figure that thing afterwards, not right here, but we'll be removing out a duplicate in the further videos, right? So just for now, just do not worry about these things that uh, these are coming duplicated. So how to remove that? We'll be covering that in a short while. Fine. Okay. Other than that, we're having employee ID employee name employee book and the email now you could just adjust these columns according to your need as well see these are adjusted right first this employee name was coming but as soon as i had taken this particular column at this place so now again that employee book is coming so you could just take this and arrange it according to your needs whatever you are just in a need so i just told you regarding two two select statements here sorry for that to select a statement first one was this statement this statement is used whenever you are having particular condition that you just want to get out the data for only this column or only that column right this is the condition that you apply out and when you do not have any particular condition like that that you just want it for this column or for that column you just want to check out your whole um, table whatever the rows and whatever the columns are there you just want to check out all of them so that is the case where you just use out this asterisk sign, right? Hope you are now very much clear whatever I just conveyed to you regarding these two select statements. Video, we had gone to the select statement, right? We had seen that how you can first of all insert the values into our uh, the table. After that, we had seen regarding the select statements. Now, the select statement do not finish up at this particular place only. We have much more things to see in the select statement only. So today we'll be continuing out the same thing, right? So now this time before writing out the queries, I just want to take you to the one note here at this particular place. Now, uh, remember in the DQL commands, we had discussed about the select statement that what is it used for, right? We had even seen out the syntax. This was one of the um you could say a simple example a manual example which i had taken out here so yeah we already saw out this particular statement and we had seen out this asterisk as well now there are several keywords which we as will use out with the select statement so the first one is the distinct keyword right so we are gonna see out that particular right here right so let's see that how we just use out First of all, I just want to explain you the use of that distinct keyword that what is that actually used out for. See, um, that distinct, distinct one is used for whenever you just want to uh, get out, let's say we had taken the column that was uh, employee work. In that employee work, we were having some repetitive work for the employees. Two or three were uh, the software engineers, two or three were the data analysts, and some of them were the business analysts, and the things were going out like this, right? Now, let's say you have a case that you want the data for uh, that how many total distinct values, that how many total values that are distinct, that are different, are present in that particular column so this distinct is the keyword which helps you to do out the same thing which i just mentioned right here let's quickly see out an example for that so i would just first of all use out my select a statement and after that what i would just write out here is that i would just write out my 
distinct keyboard right as i mentioned select distinct and okay after distinct you need to write out that column name from which you just want to select out the distinct value right so uh, okay i would just put on here the column name that is um, employee and score work right from now what's my uh, table name my table name here is employee right so that is select uh, that is select uh, distinct employee work from employee at last okay just one second at last put out this colon yeah and right here put out this colon at the last and now it's the time for running out the program see uh, what i'm just getting out here i'm getting out here employee underscore work and there are total three distinct values in this particular column first one is my software engineer second one is my business analyst and third one is basically my data analyst so the column which I had mentioned here that is that was employee underscore work this particular column is having total three distinct values into it right now instead of this employee underscore work now if I just put on here as email email uh, that was one of the columns right if I just put on that column here what it give it gave me all the emails which we present that which we had mentioned right now what's the reason because right now here in this particular case we do not have any different or any distinct value right whatever the values we are having right here all of them are different to each other so that's the reason that here i just got out all of the values which were listed but you will be able to see one thing here that two of the values were there two emails were there that were coming two times right so that have been removed out from this place right so this is the idea regarding this out so this is how the distinct keyword works right okay now next we have select all please okay now here we, here we have next keyword which is all so let's see that what is this keyword actually used for so my sql here again let's come down and write out so i would just write out select my select and the comes the all function what's my uh, one which i would be mentioning out so let's say i'll be mentioning out the name okay so my column which i want to do it for is employee underscore name from and what's my table name table name is employee putting out the semicolon and after that running out this particular line so see whatever the things were there all of them are run now right now coming to me as an output so this statement is actually a little bit similar to the previous statement which we had already seen once let me just show you that thing as well um remember we had seen out this statement right so it is almost similar to this particular statement only right nothing too much of difference right here so yeah this was about the all uh, keyword which we were having now let's move towards the next and see what is the next keyword okay now here we have this, this where clause now what is this where clause used for it is used for putting out the condition i would show you how um yes this is my skill workbench i would write out here my select statement okay select now let's say my condition is that i want the uh, i want the name of all those uh, all those employees who whose employee id is greater than 4 right i want all the details of all the employees whose email or uh, whose employee id is greater than 4 right let's say this is my condition let's write out a query for this so first of all i would write select now when all details come so in that case we could simply put out the asterisk right from what's my table name that is my employee right now here comes my where clause right where giving my condition where employee underscore id is greater than four this is how we put out the condition this is how we give out the conditions right <clears throat> now here can be one other thing that you do not want all the details you simply want out some uh, one or two details so in that case you could just specify those particular column names for which you just want the value for but right here i had just put on asterisk it means that i want all the columns all the values to be displayed whose employee id is greater than four now if i just run that out have a look 
what I am getting out here? I am getting out 5, 6 and 7. That 7 is coming duplicate. So I just told you that we will be removing that afterwards. Not right here. Okay. So if I just talk about a distinct thing. So it is coming 5, 6 and 7. Right. So this is how this particular uh, condition works out. Now if I just close that out. And instead of this aspect sign. Now if I just simply put on one single column name. Um, let's say my column name is employee underscore name right and now if I just ex execute out this particular statement see now I'm simply getting out the names only now rest of the information that was the email that was the employee ID that was work those are not at all coming right here right why because we have mentioned out one particular column name here that is employee underscore name right this is how this particular where clause works about fine now let's say now you have an another condition that you want the um, let's say you want the uh, employee id the persons whose employee id is between two till five you just want all of those to come so in that case we just use out this between function which i have written out just let's see how we just use that out so my sql I would just write out here as okay haven't I put on the semi quote at the last did I or not yes I did fine so here comes the select after that um, let's say after that comes the employee uh, okay after that let's take out the employee work employee underscore work right from what's my table name so my table name is employee P L O Y double E imply. Here comes the where clause where uh, where my condition would be where my employee underscore ID where my employee ID between two and six. Let's say this is my condition which I want to put out that select employee work basically I just want the data for the employee work from my table which is employee where my condition applies that my employee ID is between two and is between six right I would just put on the colon and let's run this out here so running it out see now I am just getting out the data for all of those so employee work which are between two and six right so two four five and six so in that case we were having some repetitive as well so it's coming here repetitive again right so i will just close this right here fine so hope you just got out the idea that how we just use out this particular select statement as well for if you just have out any particular condition so how you will be using that out right this between is again done Next, you were having not between. Not between means that you will be uh, those two values will be excluded, right? If I just put on here, not between. So it means that you would be getting out all the uh, like all the values which are not between two and six, which is basically less than two and more than six. Now, if I just run that out to see, I'm just getting only three here: uh, software engineer, data analyst, and the data analyst, right? So this is how. Uh, this not between function as well works out right so hope you first of all got out this idea that there are several um, queries which you can write there are several ways which you can just use out with the select function and get out your required data put on several conditions onto this and you could just perform out rest of the things like this right so this is all for this video till then thank you and take care